Hello, hello. Oh, hi. Hello. Hello. Okay, now, unfortunately, my overlay has stopped working once again. What a surprise. It's been over a year. Why would it start working now? <laughs> so we'll delete it. And then we will replace it. There. Now Galdrick exists. It's almost like fucking roll 20 sucks balls. No, not roll 20. Oh, oh my saying. goodness. It's almost like roll 20 sucks balls. It's more like OBS sucks balls. I don't really think it's so more like OBS is just a giant pile of garbage. I can see your entire dashboard. Yeah, I know. That's because it keeps picking the wrong window. There we go. Is Ven really low? There you go. Is that better? That's better. Is that better? I usually turn it down for my stream because I get a little fucking loud. <laughs> yeah, well, we're very relaxed here, so. Yeah. I know I am. If you catch my drift. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> I don't. I don't like what that implies. He's not oh, wearing pants. That's what it means. Fun. Oh well, I, I assume nobody's wearing pants. Oh, I'll, I'll, Part I'll of be it. Right back. Yeah. Got to take your pants <laughs> you know, this is a strictly pants off stream. This is not live. Like we're not all in the same room, so it's it's kind of mandatory that everyone has no pants on. Who wears pants? Right. I assume because everyone's watching on on Twitch that or even YouTube, that no one's wearing pants when they're t t partaking in this in any, in any way. Mm -hmm. And I hope that carries over to when we start doing the live shows too. Oh my God. <laughs> no pants live shows for the, for the actors or the viewers. There'll be a pants collection at the door. I can actually can see only... this. I can actually see this. <laughs> yeah, me too, man. You just need you. All you have to do is you have to build like a beach set so yep. we can all be in like <gasps> speedos. Yes. Oh, that way, so smart. when we all stand up, it's appropriate according yes. to TOS. Exactly. Yeah. We'll just smart. yeah. We'll do a beach episode. We'll have everyone hanging out on the beach. It'll be a beach uh -huh. one shot, and we'll all be in cosplay. Uh huh. Perfect. You're welcome. I love it. Okay. I'll take I'll take royalties now. <laughs> okay oh man i am anxious for tonight guys i am anxious for tonight what's happening tonight well one or two things what's probably what's happening tonight sure hope you guys thought about stuff because it's gonna kick well, off in a pretty to, real way have, yeah the, the good news is that i remember everything that happened last time oh my so, god Definitely. yep don't say it like that Totally Don't remember like everything that, that happened. Where the fuck so are we? Are we in Farwater right now? Oh <laughs> my god! I, have, I literally have no idea. I yeah. don't know. Part of me wants to be upset for think for you thinking that it's Farwater, but part of me is so happy that you remembered the town name Farwater that I'm not even angry. I'm not gonna lie, I just made up a name. Damn it! I thought we were. I thought I we were in Garvin. Frostwater. Oh my god! I thought god. we were in Garvin. Don't do this to me. <laughs> um, I thought that was gonna be good, but guess not okay okay uh looks like uh jake is going to be a few minutes late um but that's okay we don't have time killer uh because that wouldn't make any sense anymore or would it make the most sense we're pretty much in time killer's bedroom that's true um sure why don't we do one time killer <gasps> just a sec uh, I think this is the right one. Uh, whoa. I just Googled rhymes. <laughs> My brain doesn't work, <laughs> guys. <laughs> it said rhyme zone. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, 101 best riddles for kids. Oh, perfect. Okay. <clears throat> you guys are standing there right in front of Kerr. And you're kind of like mid-conversation with Kerr. As she just asked you, what, who or what is a Volos? And then kind of rudely, a huge, chunky robot that kind of looks like a, like a, a poor man's Optimus Prime kind of walks up to you and it says, wait, that's the wrong one. This is the one. Greetings, I am Time Killer. Would you like a riddle? Oh yeah, my yeah, god, yeah. it's so nice what's to finally big, meet you. What's your big spoopy riddle? Well, now here's the thing. <laughs> yeah, big boy, tell us a riddle. Go, go. <laughs> you say to us, okay? What's the Vietnamese guy doing here? He's not uh -huh. a usual part of the group. M Mr. Teeny Tot, why is he here? Uh, back up. 
Okay. Seems like an extraordinary choice of backup. That's how how dare you? You're a robot. You don't know anything. That's yeah, you don't even have parents. You no. don't even have parents. Oh. Yeah. You don't even have parents. You don't even have a dad. <laughs> yeah. Hey, the yeah. guy who made me is basically my dad. Kinda Who's like the guy who made you? Ah, uh, that's a good question. Who's my daddy? Who's my daddy? Okay. Oh, you can be my daddy now, Uwu. No, Slump just wants to be your your daddy. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> what about this kick, W? <laughs> shut your fuck. <laughs> shut your stupid <laughs> fucking robot mouth. <laughs> you shut your fucking stupid robot mouth. Okay, so anyways, you guys basically figured out my, uh, my whole thing. I ask you questions and then I tell Kerr stuff about you. So... You guys want a riddle? Yeah, well, that's my purpose. Do you guys want a riddle? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sure, go ahead. Yeah, sure, go ahead. Yeah, go on. Okay. Yep, hurry up. Uh, hurry up. What? Let's hear it. What? Today. What are you what waiting for? To Today. Be, what has to be broken before you can use it? A bone. A heart. A skull. Because uh, the plates come apart. A coconut. Uh, the Glass and a fire extinguisher case. An egg. An egg. An egg. Yeah, oh, an, egg. an egg's an good. Egg. An egg is correct. Good job. Doesn't coconut also work for that though? Kind of, but I didn't. I said give coconut, it to you. but you just yeah. didn't. You, I don't think you heard me. I don't, like that I don't think you heard me. Did you hear me? I said oh, coconut. I heard you. No, he I said heard. coconut. Yeah, didn't yeah like I said it. coconut. Didn't it's like like coconut. It literally has all the same properties as yep. an egg. Yep. Okay. you. Okay, want, okay, why don't you ask two questions there, wise guy, for the two answers. Uh-oh. Okay, okay, uh -oh. sounds good. What do I have to do to make you go f yourself? Die. Wow. Okay, that's not very nice. Well, it's a technical answer to your question. If you die, I, I go understand. away. Well, that's... So... Fuck, maybe uh I should be the one making the riddles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is my oh. job. Okay. One other question. Uh huh. Yes, one more question. Oh, go ahead, Slump. You got the other. You got the egg. Oh. Okay, one more question. Uh... Come on, man. You're making us what? look dumb. Um, how, what could Slump? What could Slump say to the cur dog to make them really ha her really th her or them? Her. Her. That's your question. Good question. It's a her. No. Damn it! God damn it! Fuck! <laughs> okay. Next, You're going to see next, a robot next, laugh. Next, 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 don't worry. There, don't worry. There's going to be another riddle. Here. It's going to be real rough. There's no oh, for time points. for a time killer. The whole party is here. It was nice hanging with you guys. Too bad you're going to die. You're stupid and ugly. Wow. I think I'm beautiful and smart. Well, your self-awareness chip must be broken. Wow. <laughs> oh. Ah, you're fucking dumb. <laughs> I guess that's the last thing I remember before I power down forever. Oh, bye. Oh, that's it. <laughs> the robot's sad. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy about that. I'm not going to lie. That made me happy. <laughs> okay. See ya. Okay. Let's get this. Let's get this show on the road, guys. <clears throat> Uh, so I will start uh, by welcoming folks to our tabletop RPG stream called Monsters Ain't Real, where we use the Monster of the Week rule set, not really, to enjoy some good old-fashioned tabletop RPG fun set in a space cowboy universe, not really. Uh, to anyone new, all the old episodes are up on the YouTube, so that doesn't mean, though, that you can't just hang out and enjoy the session, but I will tell you, this will spoil literally every session that has come before if this is your first session. So, yep. Uh, so get out. <laughs> well, just uh, in, do whatever makes you happy. I have no suggestions. Anyways, get out. Let's do a recap. Recap, recap, recap. Last time, you guys planned and planned. You met with Betty, Tom, Arinda, Ma, and Hutch at the cabin in Zepton. Uh, Tom taught you how to perform a tethering weave that will drain Kerr. That will drain Kerr's ink such that she can actually be fought. There are a few catches though. The tether needs to be manually maintained, which means that it has in-combat mechanics. Also, the black hole grows when it is fed ink. 
And since you will be tethering Kerr to the black hole, it will grow extremely quickly, and it will get too large if the fight goes on too long. You also told Tom about Kerr being a planar key. And Tom said that you would probably need to break the tether before Kerr actually dies, or else the key, the planar essence, could be lost. And there was a phone call made to Volos that confirmed that. If you maintain the tether after Kerr's death, that will destroy the white planar key essence. You also learned a much riskier version of the weave, one where maintaining the tether will be more challenging, but will cause a portion of Kerr's power to be transferred to yourselves. Tom noted the danger of using it, but said that it was your choice to decide which version of the weave to use. One other note, uh, the weave requires uh, the sacrifice of a willing volunteer. And right now Hutch has volunteered to be the sacrifice for the weave. You have the jewel encrusted dagger and Hutch is traveling with you. Uh, you made your way to the Dauntless where you found everyone aboard dead and the other dreadnoughts in the sky were forming into a five pointed star for some sort of massive magic spell. As you made your way through the ship, you found a few phase one weavers deep in concentration. You killed them, and once you did, you saw the lights on all the other dreadnoughts turn on. Then you made your way to Kerr's chamber. The door opened, and she spoke to you. Her one question was, who or what is a Volos? And that's kind of where we pick up. Here you guys are, in front of Kerr, the white planar key the supreme being of this existence. But that's okay. I don't think you guys have to be too scared. Do you know why? Because you guys are- main characters? Yeah, you guys are fucking heroes, man. And to make yeah. sure, to oh, make sure you guys know just how much of heroes you guys are, we've got a little bit of a special narrative camera for you guys. So let's hit that narrative camera and let's make sure we remember just how much of badasses you guys are. <clears throat> the camera opens on the party. Some time ago, they've just finished meeting each other for the first time in Tom's cave. And we see them walking out of that hole in the side of the mountain. They're nobodies right now or maybe somebody's in a small way at best. There's Lou, the fortune teller, who can't control her visions. She's had an encounter with a bleeding man, but she has a pure heart and an unshakable will to do good. She wants to help, but finds her own powers a little bit spooky. Jake, a mechanic, a man who has been broken with loss and rebuilt with a mission to discover the secrets of magic. Right now, he is an expert, but the destiny laid out ahead of him will mold him into a super wizard that can sling his own spells. Slump, a man once named Qualkek, who was an unfortunate victim of Professor Tycon Dorius's science experiment called Star Spice. Now is something unrecognizable as a man, he has Become strong and loyal, but hungry. He feels like he belongs, but most people find him monstrous. And Galdrick, an actual angel sent from above. Holy power is his weapon, and he forms an instant friendship with the monstrous slump. His means seem harsh, but his ends are just, and he will be tested to see how far he will go to save his friends, and he will shine shine with the light of the divine. We see them as they grow. We see Lou throwing the freezing flashbang at the slump monsters and having a blazing Betty shoot out of the grenade. We see Slump with door bangers on his fists, punching chunks off a horrific spider monster in Farwater. We see Jake scooping up the people of Farwater with a magic dome. We see Galdrick wrapping his enormous holy wings around the party as ghostly black tendrils attempt to kill everyone, and he teleports them to safety. We see the party 
fighting Ellie Kurtz, fighting Garvin, drawing the tack away from the people hiding in the refinery basements. We see them banding together to fight an army of bandits in the town of Keithton. We see them watching the worst yo-yo show in history. We see them growing in power. They destroy Sog. They fly to the North Pole. They kick down the doors to the Dorius Bunker. Lou looks into the future to help the group. Galdrick uses his otherworldly pistol to punch holes in the villains. Slump kicks Tycon's face off. And Jake blasts Malga with a bolt of fiery lightning. They're heroes. Heroes in their own unique way. And they've become some of the most powerful beings in the universe. We see them face off against Yilgaf, the phase four god weaver of the Arish Kigal, a force they have never encountered before and they are overwhelmed. Lou is struck down. Jake tries to push Yilgaf into the black hole, but one of the party plans the ultimate sacrifice. We see Slump explode from the snow, tackling Yilgaf into the black hole. He falls in and starts to die. Galdrick brings Lou back to life and then he proves his friendship by leaping into the black hole after Slump. Against all odds, the two friends, Slump and Galdrick, become bound and survive the unsurvivable. And our party looks to the skies. They board a rocket ship, launch into space straight towards the Dauntless. They know what awaits them. The planar key. It's daunting, it's impossible, but if they don't at least try, then no one will. And they can do it. If they band together, if they work as a team, they can overcome any challenge. We see them as they walk through the ship of the dead. Silent, cold, and dark. And we see them standing at the door to Kerr's room. The doors open, and the planar key, the most powerful being in this plane, is staring at four heroes. Slump, Galdrick, Jake, and Lou. And that's where we come back. Hey, who's the one who can tell somebody a lie and they'll believe it? Tell them full is nothing. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Okay. All right. Um, so you guys are standing in front of Kerr. All right. What were the... So the options that we were thinking of is basically... We're going to have to initiate combat, but I can't really think of a way that we won't. And we have to consider, do we <clears throat> use the spell to tether Kerr's power to the black hole and weaken her and then fight her? Use the spell to tether her to Jake so that Jake can try to absorb her power and maybe be overwhelmed and then it's a total party wipe? Or yes, please. some, some, <laughs> or some <laughs> other alternative I, we haven't... So thought of yet. here's the thing this because this is the final encounter um i know it's been a week and you guys like it's not in the moment so like you guys wouldn't be lost for what to do but basically i don't want there to be any ooc planning if you guys want to do something in game you'll need to find a way to do it in game but basically if you guys want to run through your options and get on the same page you're gonna find need to find a way to do that in game, um, because as it stands right now, Kerr speaks to you, and she says, "Now, who are you, and what I or who is a Volos? I have never been able to glean exactly what that is." Would you enlighten me, please? Um, 
Y'all want to huddle uh, up real quick? Um, I don't think that I'm really in the mood for waiting. I would like you to tell me what a Volos is now. Before I crack your minds open, I feel that would be a terrible waste. I'd rather leave you uh, intact. Uh, I mean, it's like, it's more... Like a state of being, you know? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, what she said. State of being, I'm not sure I really understand. Slump, <clears throat> I want Slump to, uh, I'm trying to think of a way to word this. Basically, I want Slump to try to use Grand Entrance uh, solely for the purpose of having um, her focus on him, but not in a way that's aggressive. Like, he's not going to throw, flip a, t a table and be like, ah, look at me, just like... I'm wondering if, if what I'm about to say can get her attention. Should I roll for that or should I say what I want to say first? Uh, say what you want to say first. Okay, so basically I want Slump to, like, as soon as she starts, like, you know, amping up the rhetoric, I want him to, to visibly, like, relax mm -hmm. and sort of, like, roll his head to the side sort of annoyedly. Like, now he's going to be forced to give an, expl an explanation that he didn't want to yep. before. Yep. And he's going to say... <sighs> We're here on behalf of Gargo and the union of uh, stage four weavers or phase four weavers. And uh, we've come to discuss the progress in this plan and it's less than satisfactory outcome. The progress on this planet is less than satisfactory. Yes. I think I it's would no agree. Are you familiar with the term SOPs, Kerr? Yes. Can I call you Kerr? I'm going to call you Kerr. Yes, that's all right. You're, you're you familiar. You're, you're familiar with the uh, standard operating procedures that we engage in in our in our courting uh, escalation of force, correct? Yes, I'm familiar with them since I was the one who wrote them. Well, as you are aware, I'm sure, Karen, I've explained this to you. The sort of hierarchy that we try to follow in this organization is one that is both self-correcting up and down. No one's immune to oversight. You created the program such that each person would be audited and in turn the program audits you as well. Yes, well, I don't think that is quite how it works here, in fact. Um, well, lack of organizational oversight would lead to gaps in knowledge like this. Perhaps you could explain why we're here. We're sent out to gather information on anomalous occurrences during phase four takeovers and here we are sent out dispatched to check on this very planet. Maybe you can explain why we're being sent here. Well, now, I assign all phase four myself, and I don't remember assigning anyone like you or anyone named Dargo. It seems... Hmm... I'm not really sure what you're trying to do here, but... The way it works is, I've created the Erish Kigal. They're mine. Phase four is below me. Everything is below me. I, uh, I kind of want to extend an offer to you though. You call yourself members of the phase four. I could make that a reality. I could induct you into the Erish Kigal. At what been... cost? Oh, uh, honestly, it's not much of a cost at all. I just really want you to stop this foolish quest that you're on to kill me. Uh, also, well, let me put an offer out to you. First, I need to make a disclaimer. I understand that you are very strong in your own way, but you must unknow, you must know you stand no chance. I'm sure that you have some sort of a magical weapon or a great spell that you think will have what it takes, but there have been many and far more powerful than you who have attempted this. They've used all manner of spell and weapon, and they have failed. I have, sta I have stood the test of time and trial again and again, and I always prevail. If there is a such thing as a god in this universe, 
I actually believe I am them. And I recognize strength and wisdom. You have strength, but do you have wisdom? I offer you a position in the Erish Kigal. Now, there will be punishment for what you've done, of course. But after the punishment, you will stand among the immortals. I can put you above phase four. I will grant you freedom from death of age. Your body shall never fail you. Now, I understand that simply the offer of eternal life is probably a little bit unappealing to some of you, so I want to make an offer to you all. I want you to understand this offer is above and beyond what I need to offer you, because as it stands, you must believe me that you stand no chance, no matter what weapon or spell you've carried with you. What do you want? To protect your friends? To gain power? Are you working to fulfill some sort of quest? From what I've seen, that covers all the bases, so let me make this offer. Slump, as I've gathered your name is. Yeah. I will give you the power and assurance that none of your friends will die. Kirby, I can protect him and make him happy. Birdie, too. Ooh. <laughs> Immediately, I'm like, ooh, wrong audience. <laughs> Going forwards, if you make any friends at all, I can help keep them alive as well. My power is great and immeasurable. I can protect them and grant you the power to protect them as well. As one of my immortals, you will have the pick of any people you choose to save. It's a large universe. I can spare a few thousand souls. Now, Jake. I have an offer for you as well. There's no Shoot. need for constant deals. I don't know who or what this Volos is, but if you desire power and knowledge, I can give that to you. One deal, agree to become a member of the Erish Kigal. I've seen you killed so many times, sure that you can't have any real problem with what we do here. We take a planet here or there to ensure that we can maintain a semblance of order and I will grant you nearly unlimited power at my side you can become a full super wizard beyond your wildest dreams with this simple agreement and Galdrick ah. yours is the easiest I know that your goal is the apocalypse Wait, what? Shut the fuck up. Shut what? Like, I mean, like, I'm like, I'm like doing the stop, like, cut at the throat. Shut the fuck up. Galdrick, what? Galdrick, your quest is complete. It's I am as as your it goal. It's not I am your quest fulfillment. It's, no, that's not. It's. I promise, guys. It's not. It's not looking at me like that. It's not Galdrick, it's perfect, she's perfect. no. She, I am no, the apocalypse. She, she, she doesn't know what she's talking about. I will destroy everything until only we remain. I shouldn't even need to convince you. I'm literally your assignment. But I'll sweeten the pot. You serve a higher calling. And Goldrick, what I can assure you of right now is that I am more powerful than even your higher calling. I am the ultimate being. I am the god. Of this universe. Galdrick's eyes narrow with absolute hatred the moment she says this. I could free you of your shackles. No need to accept quests. No need to accept missions. I can break you free of the bonds that's, that you serve. And I won't be a master. I will be a colleague. Come now, Galdrick. This is your mission. This is your quest fulfillment. And Lou. Lou, mm. I, I only have... You're the last one for me to make an offer to, but... You're the only one I don't understand. Lou, what is it do you want? Power? Knowledge? Friends? What do I offer to you, Lou? It seems you're always trying to save everyone. You're always sacrificing yourself for others. How can I possibly offer you something? As someone who only sacrifices Lou, you name it, and I can give it to you. 
other than to stop. I can't give you that. As God, I shall do as I please. But in the grand scheme of things, I take such relatively little. In this star system alone, I've only taken one of eight planets. The rest I'll just leave. They can go along their merry way. It's a large galaxy. Her, if you don't mind. Yes. In your offer to Galdrick, you just said that you would destroy everyone. Until only you and and yeah, my, possibly he Might want to notice that this bitch like gave us all contradicting offers. They've contradicted offers. Yeah, like they do contradict. So my question to you is what I mean, are you not bored? Bored? How could I possibly be bored? All you're doing is reacting. All you're doing is cutting things out. If you see anything new, it seems your reaction is to just end it. This is just all part of a large plan. It's the largest plan, the most grand scale plan anyone has ever come up with. I am the only one existing as long as I have. And only by continuing to fulfill this plan. I kind of like look up at the eyes when she says it. I'm like, eh! Goldrick, <laughs> you must understand. What? You must understand. You serve a being of measurable power. I am a being of immeasurable power, Goldrick. Oh, okay. How do you measure that, though? How do you measure that? By simply the fact that it can't be measured. So you've tried measuring it? Of course I've tried measuring it, but Which it continues to Which means it's a measurable power. It's just, it's just like off the scale. Okay, well, I guess if we want to get technical about it. Okay, okay, I'm just saying. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like you just need a bigger scale. You sounds know, like you need a bigger scale. Pop up an order of magnitude, something like that. I don't know. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Scalability. It would, be, it would be a couple orders of magnitude. Now listen, don't make me destroy you like I have so many others. Okay, well, it that's seems, not very nice. It seems that I take one for every million that I kill. And there are more heroes than there are people willing to join me, and it's so foolish they all die. But the ones who join me live for so long. Sure, Yilgif got themselves killed, and that was a, a great shame, and I shall miss them. But there are many more who have lived for thousands of years, tens of thousands of years. I can make you among them. Please, don't make me destroy you. Can Slump ask a question? Sure, you can take a few minutes to deliberate the offer. Oh, no, that no, no. Slump, no, no. Slump, Slump has a question for you right away. Absolutely. Right away. Uh, you, you tell Slump and his friends that you have immeasurable power. Yes. Nothing else can ever be as powerful as you. That is correct. I have been Nothing alive else. for no, thousands no. and shut, tens shut, of thousands shut, of shut years. Your mouth. Shut your mouth. Well, I've never no seen combina- anything no, no combination. No combination of other no. powers. No could even come combination close of heroes has ever even attempted to match. Then, I have flicked people out of existence. Then for simply inconveniencing you, you would have just wiped us out unless you're scared. I see your power. I'm so fascinated. You're strong enough to join the Erish Kigals, phase four or possibly phase three. And as it turns out, I've got a few openings in those ranks. I'm offering you a chance to join the party or be destroyed. I'll accept your offer. Oh. If you make me more powerful than you. Well, that's simply not Trust possible. is a two-way street. I can't make you more powerful than me. You, you're not even powerful enough to transfer your power? Oh, you mean give you... Oh, no. No, I'm not going to give yeah, like you Yeah, like a 60-40 power. kind of deal. No, I don't think we're going to do that. But I'm just trying to find out if that's possible. Like, if, if I joined you and in 10,000 years, you know, trust became you know, established, would you consider it then? You got to retire sometime. 
Well, the plan is never to retire, but I have fed my power to my most loyal servants in... in quantities greater than most could ever imagine. There Got are it. members so, of the Erish Kigal out there who are beyond anything you've seen other than me. There's what? There are members of the Erish Kigal out there who are more oh. powerful than anything you've seen other than me. Oh, so you are the most powerful being. Yes, I am the single oh. most powerful being in the universe. I believe that I am Okay, well, listen, I'm not going to... You're, you're well, essentially asking me to, 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 to join you so I can always be second. Yes, one of the seconds. One of the, one of the seconds. Do you understand that in your current organization, Goldrick, you're not even a third or a fourth? I am giving wow. you a massive okay. promotion. Wow, okay, well, it takes a long time to climb the ranks, okay? I am saying you could skip the ranks if you join my side. I'm we telling you, I will join your, your side if you, okay, fine, put us on even playing ground. I, <laughs> I did not Come get on! to be this old by giving myself healthy competitors. You earn that over time. I can make you okay. powerful okay. beyond okay. power. Slump has a question for you. Yes, of course. Are you comfort confident in your power? <laughs> yes. Yes, Slump, I am quite confident in my power. Well, you know what? Slump wants to be one of your lieutenants. Excellent, Slump. On Anything? a condition. On a condition. Well, I thought I already made the, the offer. I can protect all oh, your no, friends no, no. and family. Well, Slump likes that idea, but Slump doesn't want to sign up with someone who's a faker. Oh. So, in order to prove to Slump that you're not a faker... Yes. Yeah, you could be, you could be faking all this. <laughs> tie, yourself, know. tie yourself to that black hole and let us fight you. And prove that you're powerful enough. No. What, what are you afraid of? If you're infinitely powerful, what are you afraid of? That black hole is something new, I have to admit. That black hole is something that I've never encountered before. But don't worry, it won't be bothering us for much longer. That must delight you. There must be so little that you haven't encountered before. It was, I guess, delightful in an intellectual sense. But honestly, it's the reason this whole planet, and in fact this entire system, has been a bust. So, it's more of a nuisance than it is anything of great interest. The black hole itself is why the system is a bust? That cursed star spice. It tainted oh, sure. all of the humans that were on there. All that ink gone. Unbelievable. What a catastrophic waste. And now it's sucking in more ink as we speak. What an awful, awful thing. Those, those glorious, absolute morons have destroyed everything so no I don't think I'll be tethering myself to that it seems to be quite a quite a destructive force but that's okay I'll destroy it in short order and then it'll be no one's problem is that why I, I mean just to complete the loop is that why everybody on this ship is dead well I'm not one to go discussing my plans to everyone, but yes, I needed a little bit of extra juice for getting rid of that black hole, so I found some unwilling volunteers to help me with the spell. It seems then that even if you do side with you and join your organization, there's no, I mean, the benefits are poor, I oh. guess. Health insurance. Please, please don't misunderstand. None of the Erish Kigal was sacrificed. Only the Tack. Mm. Only the Tack was sacrificed. The Erish Kigal are all healthy and alive. They're actually partaking in the spell to help destroy it. Oh, definitely. Oh, yep. yeah. Cool, 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 cool. Now, I do... Really, I just would like to assure you that I think you that you're... We've got off on a weird foot, and I get why. You know, we kind of come up unannounced. You know, surprise, we're here in the middle of all these dead people. But, and maybe before when you've met new people, it's been to kill you and such things like that. But really, that's not... That's just not what this is. We're more... I look around at the group. We're like detectives. We're like... Researches. I loudly unwrap granola bar just like behind Luke. <laughs> <laughs> like 
Like, we just want to know things. We're just wondering. We're just wondering what's up. There's so, been a lot of strange occurrences. Okay, so hold on a second. This, this right here in front of us, this is a doorway, right? Like, these are elevator doors. Yeah, and they're open right now. Yep. Okay, I want to, I want to, <laughs> I'm going to hit the close elevator door button. <laughs> Okay. And I'm gonna say we need we need to talk about this. <laughs> just um, give us a second. Yes. I'll give you just right. sh shut up. Just give us a second. Well, two minutes stops. Two, two minutes stops. Minutes. The okay. Two timer minutes starts. Two. I just keep right hitting the button. I just keep hitting now. the button. Doors closed. Okay. Okay, guys. Okay, guys. Listen. Listen. Uh, Jake, can, can you do like a shieldy thingy to make sure we're not being watched? Okay. Uh, <laughs> maybe. I'll Look, do, can a you do a shieldy thingy, thingy, thingy to make sure we're not being watched. Yeah. I'll, I'll do, roll, I'll do roll a shield magic. Oh, it's fuck. a big wall of cotton. Come on, man! We've got two minutes! <laughs> <laughs> I got a bad point! Come on! <laughs> uh, time's up. I press open door. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 13. Um, it, it will buy you exactly two minutes of time. Got it. Nailed it! Okay, okay listen. Ballsy move. Ballsy move. I've got a real ballsy move. Uh, real ballsy. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Real ballsy. Well, hurry the fuck up. What <laughs> if we tell her that she's not the most powerful being in the world because she doesn't know who Volos is? I mean, she's not. Volos in, and we let them fight. Honestly, what, turn what in these fuckers. What do you mean, what, what if, if he wins? What if he wins the fight? Then we got to deal with him. We just exactly. use the same fucking tether spell. We just oh, slap no. his ass. And we can take yep. two out yep. with one yep. with, yep. with one shenanigans. Nope. Yes, 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 yes. We yep. don't want them entirely. We got to have their bits at the end. We need something left over from Kerr and Vorlos or whoever loses. Trust me, there'll and be something bring. left. It'll be, it'll be fine. It'll be, this will be totally fine. Okay, okay. listen, this then is going to work. If we let them, because if I, 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 we can bait her by essentially saying you're not the most powerful and we can prove it. There's a being out there who has just as much power as you and they have more wisdom than you because they know exactly who you are, how you exist, where you exist, and you've never even f***ing heard of them. I think he wants to meet ya. Oh, um, uh, not to, not to monkey wrench his shit, but what if we then said, hey, come with us and we just led her to the room with that what? we're supposed to lock him in? Wait, what? Yeah, what? to meet the guy. What? Yeah, we say Volos is there. What? Oh, you're talking the about place the, the plane or with the way to the... Yeah, yeah. Oh. oh, okay. We could do that. That's not a bad. Wait, idea. who are we? Who are we luring there? I mean, yeah, both of them maybe, but mostly. Oh. Well, we met Slump the creepy things. bartender. Yeah. Slump thinks the creepy bartender might be upset if we take both there in full power. Yeah, yeah, I can see them getting a little pissed off about that. Well. But it's kind of what they asked us to do. I look though. at my clock and I assume I see like thirty seconds left. How long has it been? Uh, it's been one minute. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. So well, listen, my well, okay. So well, here's please. my idea. Here's my we okay. we 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 make them fight each other. We just pick up the scraps afterwards. No matter what, at least minimum one. We're one planar key down. And I've got a trick up my sleeve in case things go sour. Mind telling us what the fuck that is? Because the only thing I, I know I can't. is we... If I do, if I do, you will literally explode. I kind of like point up towards the sky. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's like the whole Metatron thing. Okay. Well, the only backup if shit goes sideways I can think of is we just ice hutch. Sorry, bud. And yeah, just... That's okay. I and forgot then... you were fucking here. She didn't even <laughs> offer you anything. Yeah. Like Mason, by the way. It's like Mason. <laughs> I think she was going to kill me. I think she was going to kill me. Uh, oh, just for right. being here, so I'm kind of okay. great, grateful she didn't just do that. Okay, that's good. That's good. That's good. You know what? Can you just like hide behind Slump? We need to make sure that doesn't happen. Uh, yeah, yeah sure. I'll, I'll just hide behind Slump. Okay, good. Okay. Okay, well, uh, we don't really have much time, so... Well, let me throw an alternate at you. Okay, okay go. I like your idea. Like I really do. Nine. Fuck. We can either eight, do the two of them against them each right now, or seven, we can run the long game, because we got three more of these motherfuckers to deal with. No. I press open oh. elevator door. Okay. Oh, shit. <laughs> the Just door in. opens, and Kerr I stands there. <laughs> well, what has the decision been? Okay. All right. Listen. First, we wanted to. <sighs> okay. Listen. So there, you are the most powerful being that you know of, right? There's nothing I'm more powerful than you. The most powerful being that there is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's not. Tr that's 
I look at the rest of the party like a little mm -hmm. hesitant. That's mm -hmm. that's not Sl entire. Slump. Slump is like is like nodding at you with his eyes open, like yeah, yeah, go on, and then is looking at her and like shaking his head, like nah, nah, you're not. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah, you're not though. Yes, I know. I've heard this all before. Blah, no, blah, no, blah. No, 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 oh, not this us. This sword no, not is us. mightier than anything no. you could. Blah, blah, no. I'm going to slay you no. with it. No, 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 so, no, no, no. You'll, uh, you'll excuse uh, me if uh, I don't believe Volos you. Volos is what? more powerful than you. Okay, you've been a little bit. I thought Volos was a state of being. Okay, well, we lied. Uh, we no, exactly I mean, technically, to tell that you. is accurate. Well, technically, that is yeah. accurate. State of exactly. Being. That is, uh, Volos, and his state of being very is good person. friend of mine. We, he and I go yeah. way back. We're the best of buds. Kind of, uh, kind of funny you didn't know about him, actually. He talks all about you. He knows all about you and has just as much power as you do. And he has the abilities that clearly you don't possess. You see, he knows everything about you. He knows who you are. He knows your hair color. He knows that the carpet oh, matches the pubes. And he also knows that he's essentially you, but more powerful. Very clever. Very clever. I will give you points for your cleverness. N oh. Knowing that I haven't figured out what Volos is. And you're on this insane quest to convince me that I'm not the most powerful being. You just put two and two together. Oh, this mysterious Volos thing that you don't know. Oh, it's more powerful than you. Well, I'm sorry, but I don't believe you. And I think, I think our little conversation is coming to an end. Uh, uh, I, I, put, I put one finger up and I just think the word Volos. Nothing happens. <laughs> Uh, Volos. Hey, Mr. Foley Dog, want to make a deal? Nothing happens. I want to say, I, I want to, uh, I will say, Hey, Volos, if you stop being a bitch, I'll make you a deal you can't refuse. He's probably got eyeballs involved, Volos. Um... Yeah. Uh, I guess you hear in your heads the voice of Volos. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on now, guys. I'm not going to show up right in front of Kerr. Do you have any idea how foolish that would be? Tether her, and then I will help. I want to, I want to say Volos, but I'm just thinking it. I'm just holding up a finger and I'm obviously I I have like a finger phone up to my my ears and I'm just holding I'm just one fingering Kerr, you know, like yeah. just give me a second. Yeah, yeah. Listen, Bolos, buddy, okay, listen. Uh things are pretty dire, and this is just a all I need you to do is just peek out. Just just give like a little like hallucin hallucinogen of you. You don't need to, you don't need to like physically be here, but I just need you to like freak her out like oh my god i need you to secure insecurity within this bitch okay i want her to be anxious okay i need her to need therapy after she realizes that she's not because you're gonna shatter this bitch's world the moment you're like peekaboo in any sort of form okay that's all i need oh hey hold on and let me let me talk to him. That opportunity to, then we can use that opportunity to shackle her when yeah. we throw her off balance if we try to get her now she's prepared but if you can throw her off balance that'll give us an opening hey, yeah, give me the phone we need the uh, no. It's my. It's my. I'm gonna finger grab. Phone. <laughs> I'm gonna grab his finger phone. When he grabs my finger phone, I I drop the finger phone. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Hold on. I pick up the finger phone with my fingers. God damn it. Yes, hey, bud. Yes. So I feel like you popping out might be some 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 shenanigans. Probably not safe for you. Yes. Um. What can we do that can just act as proof? Can you give me like a drip of red and I do like a little party trick with some red ink and she'll be like, oh, what the fuck is that? And then sufficient. Well, none of you can see the red ink. And even if I could give you some, it would just fall through all of your existence. Oh, that makes uh, sense. Question. I mean, I can't see why. So who the fuck? I don't know. Is that true for Galdrick? I know he's not a weaver, but he has, according to the lore that you set up, he has been to all the inks. Yeah, he's been to all the inks, but no, Lou was the only one who could see the ink before, and now Got she it. can't. Okay. 
Gotcha. Okay. Okay, neat. And mechanically, I've never been able to see it, but That's I can right. still only weave with white because it's right. native to white. Yep, exactly. Oh, well, never mind. I guess fuck me. That's my plan. Here you go, Galdrick Finger Phone. Just I distract okay. her, tether her, you, and then I will you, show up and I can you help. You need to be the fucking distraction, okay? I need something here, buddy. I'm I need something. I'm not going to show up. Well, Kerr is at full power. Do you understand? That oh, is a sure. risk we I just cannot get to deal take. with Kerr while she's at full power, huh? Just distract her and tether her. Use your stupid spell to tether and weaken her, and then I can help kill her. Oh my god, you were so f I hang up, and I just, I'm just like, uh, apparently I'm, uh, I like put my hands in the air and I kind of do like party. <laughs> and I just like start acting crazy and I'm just trying to distract her. <laughs> what on earth are you doing? You've just been talking on your phone. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. I actually, I've got it. I've got it. But I, right when this happens, <laughs> yeah. right when this happens, I want to use my connection to Galdrick to try to communicate with him telepathically for a very brief moment. Yeah. Okay. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna like connect to his brain and just say the two words, superpower. And if he says, like, yes, in his head, I want us to do the full-on Dragon Ball Z. I have to describe this perfectly so everyone's on track with what I'm thinking here. Imagine you're on a bike, and you put your left arm up as though you're going to turn left or right, or I guess right, whatever the fuck it is. You turn your arm so that you know, you're know you making a 90-degree angle, and your fist is pointed straight up in the air. Now, imagine that you're doing that with both of your arms. Now, it's imagine really Goldrick. Dancing. Yeah, exactly. The fusion <laughs> dance. Yeah, <laughs> it's the fusion <laughs> dance. Yeah. And we connect at the fucking fists, and I want to, like, merge into our superpower form. Yeah. But before we do it, I want to look at Kerr and say, you think you know everything. You don't know anything. And then I want to do a fusion dance. Um, okay, you guys do both need to roll to see if it succeeds. Oh, fuck. You both need to roll oh, d20s. And Slump you both said need that no to, matter what. <laughs> yeah. So the way it works is you both roll d20s. And if you okay. both roll above 10, it works. All right, Gal, we're gonna do it at the same and time. If you, okay. If you okay, roll, can, okay. Can anyone so roll to help out? <laughs> Just asking for a nope, friend. Nope. No helping out. This is because this thing is OP as fuck. So the way it works is, if you both roll above ten, then it works. If one of you rolls below ten and the other rolls above, then you just kind of bump fists and nothing happens. If you both roll less than ten, you will share all damage dealt to either one of you. <laughs> okay, well, okay, I don't really care for this idea. <laughs> because it is OP as into? fuck if it works. I feel like there's a good chance at least one of us will get above a 10. You know, because in my mind, I'm thinking it's a fucking stealth roll. So I know. I'm sabotaging no, myself. Yeah, I know. It's, not, it's not a stealth roll. It's not a stealth roll. It's it, a charisma te roll. Technically, is this, it's is performance. This plus, is, this, is this plus tough because it's to protect someone? I'm just asking for a friend. It is plus nothing. Come on! It is, 50, 50 boys. it is fate. This is the twist of fate. This is pulling on the bond that you share. This is calling upon fate. I'm being real with you right now. Okay. Yeah. If this shit doesn't work, I'm going to burn one of my very last luck on this shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, good call. Yep. I, have, I have two luck remaining. Oh, just my so God. Clear. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, All right. Eight, three, two. Yep. One. Ah! Oh, <laughs> oh god. no! Oh my god! A natty fucking one. A you better roll. Natty you, better, you better use one. that wow. luck. I swear to God, I will. Oh, he doesn't you so have hard. any luck. He's doomed. Oh shit. He's doomed. He doesn't yeah, have any luck. Can well, it just I doesn't use do anything, luck right? On his behalf. No. We're trying to connect. How is that not a thing? Oh, okay. You know what? Okay. Because you are connecting, I think that's a valid. Ex I think that's a valid reason. I am one luck away from being doomed, you motherfucker. You can burn one of your last two lucks to force Slump's roll to a full success. At the end of chapter one. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, are you using your luck Galdrick? Uh, I will I will use one of my last luck I've got one more until I'm doomed okay oh my god okay then you guys do this fusion dance 
The fists touch, but Slump is a little bit out of step, and it looks like it's not going to work. It's just going to be a flubbed attempt. attempt. But then, Galdrick, you reach deep down inside, and you realize that if this doesn't work, that's literally it. Kerm will unmake all of you. And that desperate hope, that desperate need for this to work manifests and it just adjusts the position to exactly what it needs to be. And the rest of you see them touch fists and they fuse. And you see what you saw for only one brief moment as it came hurtling out of the black hole. You see Slump grow even taller than he used to be. All four arms come out, but as they do, his whole form starts to shimmer, and it becomes more like that void angel that you saw Galdrick become once his skin suit peeled off. And out of his back sprout four massive, pointed, kind of like uh, void smoke wings, and the eyes open, and they are blazing white, and kind of where the mouth should be starts to open up in this freakishly, unnaturally large, Totoro-style, Galdrick smile. And you see the ultimate Galdrick slump fusion form standing before you. And when you do, you do see Kerr as she takes a second. Like this caught her off guard. She's seen a lot and she's never seen that. And you consider her sufficiently distracted for a split moment. Cool. I'm drawing the peanut butter knife and the weird magic knife. Okay. Peanut butter knife used the ability so that I just have... Uh, it says plus to dope karate shit. Yep. So whatever. <laughs> boom. Activate. And yep. then I'm just going to like huck the gem thing into Hutch and just go, sorry, dude. <laughs> All right. Roll. Uh, to kick some ass. Roll plus tough. Add your karate. Add your plus peanut butter knife. Add everything you need to what add. F- I don't know what plus peanut butter knife is. I just have plus, plus two one. dope karate. It, this, okay. is, this is dope karate shit. Just add another plus one to it. Oh my god. The Not barest, great. The barest minimum of a success. I think you throw this knife and cur sees it can i so i guess that's not it's too late i was gonna say can i have like will smith arms up showing uh like displaying the galdrick and slump fusion so that she's <laughs> focusing even more on that while this is going <laughs> the unknown um i think i think the knife is already kind of tossed and she's already kind of noticed it that's true but i Speak think <laughs> the role was already good enough so basically what you see is you see her stretch a hand forward And none of you see anything because none of you can see ink. But it looks like the knife starts to veer off path. But uh, kind of Hutch sees this and so he moves and the dagger strikes him directly in the heart. Sorry, dude. (laughs) He just gives a thumbs up. He's like, it's okay. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, boy. (laughs) All right. Now, Jake, roll to use magic. Oh boy. To use the tether to tether Kerr to the black I know. hole. I'm I'm obviously m- minorly indisposed. So I'm just going to throw it out there. Can anybody perhaps roll to help out? Yeah, I like it because I, yeah. I, I looked and learned the spell when they yeah. did. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you definitely know. So, yeah, you kind of see as uh, Jake is doing this, you are kind of shouting reminders of how it went. It wasn't complicated, but it was complicated enough uh so you can roll at advantage oh shit yep yep Mm. 18 is a i mean both of them were complete successes and none of you see it none of you can see ink so what happens is jake you kind of throw your hand towards the planet's uh direction because you remember where that was and it feels like casting out a fishing line When you do the cast and you just kind of feel the slack pulling into the distance. And then when it hits the water, 
It's like a shark bit the line and you just have a fishing rod and you feel this pull that is beyond anything you could have imagined. It's like it wants to swallow your existence. It tries to pull you through the weave and you connect it through Kerr and her eyes widen. As you guys didn't even notice that you felt her presence until you feel it draining away and you suddenly realize that Kerr is absolutely tethered and losing her power quickly, which also means that that black hole is growing right now. Um, I gotta go, Shark! <laughs> <laughs> Let's go ahead and roll some initiative. Um, uh, Slump and Galdrick, you guys get to go first because you are super ultimate death demon slump form. So you guys when definitely those, get to those, go first. When those eyes open, I want to be like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I want slumped slump to look right at her and uh and can I use uh my first roll to maintain the tether and then say something as well um basically you guys are gonna get one f free turn as okay. the super angel because you only get one turn as it and you're just going to tell me kind of what you want to do as super angel form after that you're going to fall back to your two separate forms but think of something that you are going to get to do as this one free bonus turn as super insane angel you both have to agree Napa. on it yep napa style hold on hold on hold on no oh. no no, no, no what you want what <laughs> killer in one punch i want to i want to be one punch slump okay that's what I, I, want to, I want to i want to napa style i want to turn i want you to call out your trident okay. use our combined powers your in your angelic form to hover it right above our head and then spin it so fast that it turns into a napa style destructo disc <laughs> hurl it right at her just see what she does with that shit. all right i can do that Eldrick, that sounds good. I mean, yeah, let's fucking do it. Okay. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't really know what... Uh, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Aren't there stats that you gave me for this? Well, I know. No, no everyone, stats. It's everyone, just insane. Everyone's saying you mean Krillin. No, I mean fucking Nappa. Nappa threw a Destructo Disc styled attack. Okay, if you watch the fucking series, idiots, he throws a disc. I'm not saying it's, I didn't say like Destructo Disc. I said Nappa's ability that's like a Destructo Disc. Exactly. You ding dongs, wake up. <laughs> um, okay, so roll plus cool uh, for the rest of you to see where you fall in the, um, in the initiative order. Okay, Lou is probably going last. <laughs> he doesn't have a lot of initiative. Oh shit, is it um cool? Plus cool, yeah. Okay. Got that two out of the way though. There you go. Um and then when you guys come out of the form, uh roll uh both of you roll uh initiative. Um uh slump and Galdrick just to see where you what fall. Is it again? Cool. Uh, plus cool, yeah. Okay. See where you guys fall once you come out of the form. Boy. Okay. Oh dang. I'm going to fall. Well, he's really tall. I assume I'm the head. Yes. You know? yeah. <laughs> I'll form the head. <laughs> I'll form the body. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So. Okay. So the way this goes is the slump Galdrick super void angel form summons the trident and it begins spinning above your head you hold your hand up palm up and the trident starts spinning faster and faster and faster until it straight up looks like the destructo disc and you can see Kerr her eyes narrow as she sees this attack coming just a second I need to some shit's about to go down so <laughs> um her eyes narrow as she realizes you think this is your like this, she she thinks that this was your plan was to go void angel and attack her and that's going to be what kills her and she's so sure in her power you see her kind of getting a bit of a ready stance there's no role needed the role was the fusion you guys land the attack and it deals 30 harm oh, mama. as this disc just goes flying towards her 
and she puts up a hand almost half-heartedly to stop it. And it doesn't even slow down. Oh my God. This spinning blade of trident energy smashes into her and sends her flying back 30 feet and knocks her over and cuts her whole body wide open. There is blood gushing from every part of her as she completely didn't even attempt to block this destructo disc. Oh my God. And she stands up. This whole woman's career. Yeah. She stands up immediately like, you know, beaten, well-worn kind of thing, taking a huge amount of battle damage. And she says, what? What? What have you done? What have you done? This is good. I'm so big and powerful. <laughs> you fools. Oh, you fools. It's so funny because she's bleeding. You absolute idiots. How Why? dare you? How dare you do this to me? Get ready for another one! And I'm like, <laughs> I want to like get ready to like do it yeah. again. Yeah. But, I, but I'm going to fall apart. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I think you call the trident back and you lift it over your head and then the head of the angel falls off as Skaldrick falls on his face. <laughs> as, as the trident is now spinning above the slump's head and he has yeah. absolutely no magical ability to hold it there like, <laughs> plunk, as a false bump passes out like, oh. yeah absolutely <laughs> um, so now it is Kerr's turn and she attempts to use an ability well no she uses the ability fold reality and she looks at, uh, I guess, probably Slump because he was uh, the one who looked the most ready to keep going. And what you guys see is kind of Slump fold in half. And then when it kind of like, after he's finished folding in half, it's almost like he refolds upside down or like it backwards kind of thing. It's like a mirror image of him, not upside down. It's like he's facing the other direction and he's a little bit transparent and slump uh yep. you are phased for one turn so basically you're oh. going to miss your next turn okay interesting note if she was untethered that removes a player from existence oh okay yeah. well that's worse hey, that's sweet it's a character significantly deletion. worse <laughs> yep that's <laughs> That's significantly worse. I'm glad that that didn't happen. And you see when you are still there, like everybody can still see you. You're kind of phased a little bit, but everybody can still see you. You see her eyes widen. What? What have you done? What have you done? He shouldn't even be here anymore. You've linked me to that cursed black hole, haven't you? I can feel my power draining. I can feel my power. I do like the same hand thing that I did the taunt and try to distract. <laughs> I hope you understand that you still are no match for me. I will destroy you. I will destroy whatever tether you've put me on and I will be free of this. You've done nothing but prolong your short, miserable lives. I will make sure that every moment is excruciating pain. That's what you think. Hit it, Volus! And I want to like point to a random corner of the room. Oh shit. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> I think that both, both is fucking curse as that in, in character too. <laughs> oh shit. Uh, and fucking. I'm either expecting nothing happens and I look like an idiot or Volos comes through and it's majestic. This is dealer's choice here. Just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you call Volos, absolutely. From that corner of the room that you pointed at. Volos. Huh. Okay. Volos comes out. A portal opens up. And those gray, weird, fleshy legs step through. Ew. The cloaked figure comes through. One arm is kind of crooked up palm facing straight up and he's holding a cube in his hand and he looks at Kerr and he says 
<laughs> oh, this is everything I've ever wanted. Thank you guys for bringing me here. Now, Kerr, if you would do me the pleasure of suffering. Yeah! Wait, what? And Volos casts... Oh my god. Um... Okay, Is that the so name of the spell? no, he ca he casts spell. suffering, and you see, um, uh, uh, oh, no, uh, uh, right now. are you fucking uh, me right now? Wow, are you kidding me? This is some level of bullshit. Oh, no. Are you fucking me right now? You better fix that shit. Someone want to change the server? Are you kidding me right now? I got it. Wow, this is super fucked. Wow, sorry. Well, okay, I changed the server. Okay, okay, we're I can good. hear you guys. Okay, yeah, we're holy good. shit, Excel, that was some awful timing. Wow. <laughs> oh <laughs> my god. And at that exact moment, yep. I mean, and we're going to uh, hmm. come on. Um, and so, uh, wow, okay. So, okay, Volos he shows up casts, to prepare to suffer. Yep, he says, prepare to suffer, and he casts suffering. You see her start to get up but as soon as she does volos lifts one of his creepy long fingered wide palmed hands and you see that mouth kind of peeking out from underneath the hood just grows into the most unnatural smile you've ever seen and Kerr falls down to all four and starts screaming oh my God. can i watch can i watch very closely and just look to see how she's doing and if she gets too low, if I can tell if she's about to trip over the mortal coil or whatever, um, yep. I can I can say something if that happens. Yep, yep. Um, yeah, okay, I will warn you if it looks like she's getting too close. Okay. Um, okay, uh, and that's Volos's turn. He did an unknowable amount of damage. Uh, like Kerr is screaming like she's having her soul ripped out and uh, appears to be completely uh, unable to move. Uh, and next it is Jake's turn. Let's wrestle this ghost shark, I guess. Uh, you want to you want to <laughs> focus on on maintaining the tether? Yup. All right. Um, then you sacrifice your turn and you guarantee the tether or you can roll it. You can do what you want to do and then uh, roll to maintain the tether. It's kind of your uh, options. And the stipulation for absorption into myself rather than the black hole was that no one else could help if I failed, right? Uh, that would that would have to be done at the time that the weave was cast. Oh fuck! All yeah. right. <laughs> we can tell we if you because nobody's made a roll yet. You could say that you used that kind of um, you used that uh, version of it if you want, because nobody's had to make a roll yet. If you want to do the one that can't be guaranteed, then um, we can do that. Which one did you well, want to cast? I mean, I'm kind of cheating because I see that I already rolled a fucking 22 and I obviously want to slurp that shit up. So it's up to you if you want me to roll it again after. Oh, no, 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 that's that. That would be the roll. Absolutely. Okay, I want but every me, single that's... every single person will have to roll that to maintain it. And if it's failed by everyone through one set of turns, um, then it is it is a failure and she will no longer be tethered. So there's nobody can sacrifice a turn. Well, you know what? The thing is, I'm just gonna throw this out here for a second. Um I'm not super worried about uh her no longer being tethered necessarily because I feel like now that Volos is here, I doubt he's going to let that happen. You think he would help Jake? I just, I don't even, I feel like he's, look at her current state. I don't know that she'd be able to do much even if she somehow wasn't tethered anymore. I mean, I don't know. I don't see how she'd get the upper hand on him, but that might also be my super inexperienced and uninformed opinion. Yeah, I don't want to dip into like player, like player mm. game knowledge because this is fucking turn one of a boss fight so i'm pretty sure there's going to be more i'm mostly thinking it from a character perspective i don't want that black hole getting bigger i don't know if running it through me or us will make that much of a dent did we discuss that keeper uh it's not going to make too much of a dent because she's got like billions and billions and trillions of lives inside of her and you can only hold like 
a million if you could hold a million it would still be less than one percent of what she has and the all the rest would still go down to the black hole so it would power you up a lot but in terms of slowing down the black hole not so much oh man I feel like powering myself up is like not fun though, because then I'm just gonna fucking walk around just using like finger of the mountain for the rest of the fucking campaign. Um, um don't assume what the rest of the campaign is gonna be. Oh, yeah, do let's what just, you want to do, and yeah. uh, that's what Jake would do. Yeah, God damn do it, it. Man. I would slurp that. Give me that fucking straw. Let me drink that milkshake. Okay, um, Jake, you rolled to maintain the tether. You succeeded. Gain plus two to all your stats. Hey. And this is going through everybody. Everybody is getting this. Oh, was the oh wow. what? Yes. This was like a multifaceted straw that is now going into all of you. And on your turn, you are going to get plus two on every turn until the fight is over. Are you telling me that somebody forced a straw in my mouth? You're yep. welcome. Okay, right it's off kind the of, bat, I look like I'm going to fight it, but then I start to like it. <laughs> yeah, this feels real good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, what else would you like to do, Jake? You just got your plus two slurp. Oh, um, maintaining the spell doesn't consume the turn? Nope, that's additional. That's an additional. Okay, cool. Yeah. I'm going to move to the back of the elevator and I'm going to put myself in the smallest, thickest dome I can possibly produce. <laughs> All right. Uh, roll to use magic and you have... Oh shit, with another plus with two. With another so plus two. So 23. You form like a super shell. This thing seems to defy the laws of reality as you create a barrier around yourself. I'm okay! <laughs> <laughs> um... Lou, it is your turn. You get plus two to all, or uh, you roll to maintain the tether. Yes. What is that um, using again? Plus Sorry. weird. Oh, Lou, with the plus two is great. Everyone has to do it, and if it fails a series, uh, that does not succeed. Ooh. You can. Uh, you you get your plus two because that's just the nature of of the weave but you are not maintaining its its tether and so what if if um that's that right like if if this doesn't work it doesn't matter what happens with the other guys uh if one of you succeeds it doesn't matter what happens with the other guys like jake's already succeeded oh. you guys are good okay oh, all, right, all right all right okay yeah, yeah. So on this turn yes i am oh, okay okay excellent um, so that was that part, and then I can do an action? You sure can. Can I do something to um, protect or obscure Jake? Protect like, or obscure please. Jake? Um, yes. Uh, so yeah. I was thinking um, if... So she's fairly distracted right now, so she might not have seen Jake hunker down. Yeah, her if eyes can, are closed. She's just yeah. screaming. Okay, excellent. So I would like to... Uh, Weird well, response to that, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look over here, Kar. <laughs> Um, I would like to uh, stand... First of all, stand in front of him. So um, that's happening in case nothing else works. Um, mm -hmm. But I would like to try and call on um, my good buddy to gather enough materials to make like multiple things that look like Jake. Multiple little like balls. Um, <laughs> that are just scattered around. So distraction decoys. Yeah. You reach out to gold buddy and there's no one on the other end. <gasps> you feel like having them get so close to the black hole during the fight oh, with Yilgif, yes. it oh, might've, yes. it might've slurped them up. Oh no! Entirely? <laughs> It is, yep, Gold Buddy is gone. Oh, I feel very bad about that. <laughs> oh, no. I killed a guy. <laughs> that sucks. Oh, well, I'm going to... Uh, does that use my turn? Because that's fine. But then I'll just have like a crushing existential kind of realization. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. I guess that's yeah. That's that's your turn was to kind of reach out to Gold Buddy. That's and fair. like when you couldn't, you tried harder and harder. And that's basically, that. that's like the time of your turn was trying to reach out to Lou 3. Oh, universe, I apologize. And okay, but I'm yeah. standing in front of Jake. Yes, so. you are standing in front of Jake, yep. Galdrick, it is your turn. 
Uh, all right. Mm. I'm not eating Chipotle. Okay. okay. <laughs> That's good. All right. Okay. You know how you know um, the rules against spicy food on this stream? <laughs> no, it's Chipotle. It's fine. <laughs> all right. Uh, okay. Slump's phased out. Jake's domed. I don't need to roll to uh, do any sort of thing, right? It's already been successful. Uh, I mean, you can roll to get your bonus. Or no, wait, no, you already get your bonus. Yeah, no, you don't need to roll to to save it. It's already, it's already, it's already been maintained. So yeah, you're good. You just get plus two to all your stats. Okay, got it. All right. Um, I mean, I don't really know. Do I just? I mean, it's clear that he's casting. Su is this suffering spell is she still on all four suffering like absolutely this is a channeled sort of thing or is this like she's just writhing in pain from what just happened sort of thing she seems to be crushed by an invisible weight that is like causing her an insane amount of uh pain but looking at volos it does not look like he's channeling anything got it uh okay in that case i I don't know how to put this. So I'm going to, I'd like to use magic. Yep. To prepare my vessel. Okay. I want to essentially prepare my vessel to I don't know how to say it without completely giving away the farm. I, I want to. I, want to I almost think I know what vessel. you want. I think I, I almost want know what you want. Prepare my vessel. Yeah, I think that. Yeah, I think you can roll to use magic. Okay. Okay. Uh, magic is plus three now because I have plus two, right? Yep. 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 Yes. yes. It it had to be above fifteen because I think I know what you're going for. And that uh -huh. was, that's not going to be easy. So with a 16, you feel like you are sufficiently prepared. I wanted to like in the middle of this battlefield, just kind of like monks standing, like just like, I'm just preparing my, my vessel, like just yep. very calm, very Buddhist monk, just very. Yep. Um, okay. Then we go back to Kerr's turn and she is absolutely immobilized. If anything, the screams get louder and multi-tonal. And this is, is hard to watch. This is beyond physical pain and beyond mental pain. This is spiritual, existential, planar pain. And it's, anybody else would already be dead. Anybody else would have died from the damage that she just took. But somehow, because she is who she is, she's still technically alive. But by definition of the spell, she is absolutely immobilized. So then it moves to Volos's turn, who uses Lord of Demons. And you guys witness the room, all the candles on the outside all go dark. The room becomes pitch black. And then in that darkness, you see these shapes start to form. They look like gargoyles standing upright on their back two legs. And then kind of like Balrogs, they breathe in and fire illuminates them from the inside. From their chests, they pull blazing swords and five of these 10 foot tall gargoyle Balrogs all plunge their blades into Kerr. And it is bad. There is a lot of cutting. There's a lot of burning. And there's no way that a, a body should still be living after this. The cuts are all the way through. Pieces of her are hanging, but she's still screaming from the suffering spell. Now a little bit OOC. Galdrick looks at the rest of his party and points at the name of that spell and said, I f***ing told you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in my bubble. <laughs> All right, next is Slump's turn. Slump, the spell that had you phased falls as the person who cast it can no longer maintain any aspect of it and you are ready to go. Okay. Um, By the way, the demon spell did 100 harm. Oh, no. The, who, Power creep. The, the last one. 
uh, Volos' spell? Volos spell where he summoned the five demons that did a hundred harm. Ah, okay. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of what the movie is from that I'm trying to think of. Uh, basically, I want to like grab her by the face and start siphoning her health. Oh, you want to just I yeah? You have the life drain thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I want to say, I want to, I want to <laughs> grab her and lean in. And imagine Slump's eyes like huge and perfectly circular, and his pupils are just gigantic. And he says, "I want to see what a god tastes like." Um, you fucking okay. mentor this bit. <laughs> yeah, so I first of all, Slump, you do get plus two to all your stats. Okay. Um, because of the siphon is, is working on you and you just want to reach the, she has no defense. She is by definition incapable of taking action other than yep. screaming. So yep. you walk up to her, you put well, your hands on her face and half yep. her head is cut off. One of those oh. Balrogs has already cut half her head off. Oh, and she is nice. screaming directly into your face as pain that you can't even comprehend is racking every fiber of her being. How is her head cut off? Hamburger or hot dog? Uh, <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. It's like somebody took a bite out of an apple. Ah, okay, perfect. All right. Uh, excellent. Yep. I want to grab it and just like squish it a little bit like an overripe peach. <laughs> just it's, use life drain. Yeah. Oh, so you squeeze and like as strong as you are and as weak as she is, you can't push your fingers in, but oh, interesting. you can feel the life force. Okay. You get to feel okay. what it's like to drain a mm, god. Yeah. Uh, you deal, uh, I think your attacks do five harm. Uh, yes, they do. Yeah. So you deal five harm uh, just for touching her and having your life drain take effect and trying to crush. Like you're crushing. It's just not like squishing like a normal person's head would. Okay. Um and uh roll roll plus weird to try to maintain the tether. Nice. Uh okay. Ho, 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 uh, ho, ho. Uh, that the actually does not succeed. Seven. Oh, it what? needs to be above fifteen for the tether oh. to succeed. Yep. Oh wow. Okay. Um, but that's okay. It's still you. We still have three other people who can try to roll. Okay. Jake, it is your turn. Roll for tether. Roll for tether. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the tether is safe. You also get plus two to all your stats again. Um. Oh shit! Everyone or just me? Uh, everyone on their turn is going to get another plus two. You get Got plus it. two at the start of your turn for every turn until the fight's over. Solid. What is um, that? Stacking. Stacking. Oh my god! What? Plus yeah. two and plus two. More every single turn. This is a big, big spell. Yeah, Say that last part again. What did we get? Um, basically, because this is the riskier weave, you guys get plus two permanently to all your stats at the start of every turn, and that continues to stack. Oh, okay. So we get another plus two. You get another plus two. Okay. That was right um, now we're at a plus four. That's right. Everyone should be at a plus four, basically. I don't want to risk anything. I just want to turtle up and stay back here where I'm safe and focus on this shit. Yep. I don't want to expose myself. I don't want to do anything. I'm just going to chill in here yep. and focus on this goddamn ghost shark and try not to die. Yeah, I think uh, I think if you want to stay there, I won't make you roll to maintain the shield. We'll just carry your roll from the previous turn over. Done. Okay. Yep. Still, that shield is unmoving. And Lou, it is your turn. I would still like to do something to obscure Jake. So, but maybe I can do it with physical scarves, with just physical stuff that I have. Yep. Um, so create some sort of uh, shield thing, even though I'm realizing as I say this, that she could probably just have you know, like an area of effect <laughs> spell. So it might not be super great, but I'm going to do it anyways. Um, and uh, yeah, just put up, try and like build a little screen of scarves. Um, in front of Jake across this kind of whole area so she can't really see what's going on over here. You want to build like uh, scarves in front of the like the elevator door kind of thing? Like a blanket for it? Like yeah, a blanket, blanket for it. it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, 
Volos summons Balrog demons. Slum mm -hmm. drinks the essence of a god. Yes. Jake becomes an impenetrable shield. Correct. And Lou builds a scarf fort. You would like to build a scarf fort. Great. I fucking Great. love that. That is the most Lou thing I've ever heard in, a co in combat. Uh, Lou, yeah, you hang a bunch of scarves up, and sure enough, like to the naked eye, you can't see into the into the fucking. Yeah, now uh, you'll see. Uh, well, you're actually, wait, let's roll. Let's, let, let's make a roll first. Roll to act yeah. under pressure. I would say you're under pressure. And that's true. Are the knots gonna hold? We don't know. Yep. So it's plus cool, which is plus four. Plus four to that, I mean. Ooh, a nine! My it's hands not, are it's shaking! It's not very good. It's my not hands very, are shaking. Lou builds a not very good <laughs> cigar oh, fort. Oh, my sweet girl. It's, oh, a, boy. it's a couple scarves hanging from the top, but you can totally see through. <laughs> as I'm, like, maintaining, as I'm, like, working on my, my body, my vessel, I just do, like, a disappointed sigh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Galdrick. <laughs> um, it's your turn. I, uh, I'm going to do the same thing. Okay. Wow. I'm, um, I'm, I'm planning to do some insane shit. So I'm going to do the same thing. Okay. Uh, ro roll will just carry over. If it's okay. the same thing, right. roll just carry over and it's a success. Okay. I'm just sitting there just dead still, dead silent. Just whatever an angel meditation form would look like is what I'm doing. I'm yep. Controlling no, breathing, create, lighting my chakras. Yeah. I'm doing, I'm doing everything. Um, <laughs> I'm hyperventilating uh, the fucking ball, and you over there <laughs> reaching Nirvana. <laughs> and it is Kerr's turn, who is still, by the definition of this, the ability suffering, in unable to take any action other than to scream. And so she continues to scream, but it's starting to lose its vigor. It's coming out almost like a whisper at this point. With Slump grabbing her face, you see the veins start to show, and you can see Kerr is starting to fade. This is an absolutely insane amount of damage that she is taking, more than, than she ever expected. She's never faced another planar key before. She didn't know they existed, and she was completely unable to defend against this. She sits there screaming, and then it's Volos's turn. Volos uses the ability, the cube. And he holds up that hand that has the cube. And he kind of holds it between himself and Kerr. Then he puts his hand on kind of the side of the cube closest to him. And you all hear him as he says, Well, 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 it turns out I didn't really need your help after all. The essence shall be mine. And as he pulls his hand towards himself, you see everything that is Kerr basically vanish other than the body. That sense of power that was around her disappears. The, the body is no longer capable of sustaining life and the corpse collapses. And you see somehow Volos stand up just a little bit straighter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, guys. Thank you so much. This has been absolutely wonderful. Can I drop the tether? Uh, yes, you can. Uh, actually, the tether is no longer there. So, <clears throat> the tether is basically... You guys are no longer gaining plus bonuses. The tether has been broken. Um, like, can I still manipulate the tether? Like, did I end the spell, or is like the other end just not hooked to anything? The the spell itself has been broken, basically. Fuck. 
Okay. Never it's like it's like it would have it would have sucked until it was dead and there was nothing to be tethered to, and then it would have evaporated. And that basically that condition has happened. But there was nothing left to be tethered. There was nothing left to be tethered, so the tether oh just boy. kind of evaporated. Hey, I'm gonna take things that are bad news for 200, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> and you all oh. feel it because you were all connected to the tether. You were being juiced up. You all feel that tether disappear. Oh my God. Well, this is terrible. Uh. Galdrick, would, Galdrick would like to breathe one last time and then he would like to speak. Oh shit, hold on, Goldrick. Mm, are we allowed to side sideline for a second or no? Uh if you want to, but it better be brief. Goldrick, are you about to do some weird shit? Oh, I'm about to do some weird shit there, dog. Goldrick, can I kill you? What? No! <laughs> are you sure? <laughs> like, can I kill this body and will you be okay? Cause you're like a ghost. Just give me a second. If this doesn't work, we can go with that. We'd kill me plan B. All right, go <laughs> quick, dude. Um, so keeper, I want to get that dagger. Yep. And if whatever Goldrick does fails, yep, I'm gonna stab him with the dagger and do the weave on uh, Volos. Yep, okay, okay. So Goldrick, let's have it. I look at Volos, my vessel all prepared. Oh my god, it's so yep. terrible. And I want to say, Vol and I want to genuinely look concerned. Yep. I want to look like I'm on his side. I want to look like I'm his best friend. Yep. Fall out! Buddy, wait! What? If you don't infuse me with all of your power right now, as well as what's inside that cube, you're going to die, like, forever! And I want to use the one lie. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Um <laughs> how does this work? He believes you. Absolutely he believes you. You see that grin turn into a grimace of fear as he believes you are right. He believes that if he does not give you his power, he's going to die. So I think... <clears throat> oh man. I'm sorry I'm fucking your campaign. No, 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 no. I had I had <laughs> considered this as an option. It's just Oh man. Hey Slump. Oh man, yeah. how does this play out? How does this play out? Oh my god. How um, is there like hand the in the air? And I wanna I want to turn on the waterworks. I wanna start to cry just to really sell it. Yeah. No, he believes you. Absolutely. Um and, uh, oh my God. <clears throat> uh, hold on. What just, I want to DM you something real quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I want to give slump the uh, dagger. Okay. Okay. Then I think what happens is what what Volos believes is that taking the white planar essence is too dangerous. He can't take the white planar essence. It would kill him forever. There's something that he doesn't understand about taking the planar essence that will destroy him. And somehow he believes that you know it. So you can see as he's pulled through that box, he's holding in his hand this wispy white orb, which you all immediately know is the essence of the white planar key. And Volo says, What? 
What do you mean? This will kill me if I take it? It'll kill you! <sighs> Goldrick. There's no time! And I think as soon as you say there's no time, he opens up his palm and the essence of the white planar key slams into Goldrick's chest. And Goldrick becomes the white planar key. Goldrick Holy becomes shit. Oh my God. the singular most powerful being on this plane of existence. Oh my God. He becomes Goldrick the White. <laughs> oh my God. That may, oh God. That's quickly wow. now. Goldrick, wow. what is, what, what, wow. how do we fix this? How can I, I need to, I will, I will be in contact. Goldrick, thank you for saving my life. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, I kind of want to like hand up, like, like hand up, like, <laughs> I hate you, Volos, okay? We're never on the same page, but I don't want to see you dead, buddy, okay? I appreciate that. I will do some research on my end. Okay. And he steps back through his portal. And Goldrick, God damn it. you can feel the power of the white planar essence like it's trying to fuse with you but because you're kind of you're almost three beings now the skin suit is kind of a being the void angel is absolutely a being and still you're bonded to slump in some way that you don't understand and the white planar essence trying to fuse with you is uncontrollable you can feel it trying to tear reality apart somehow this is fighting with the essence of the White Plains existence. So, okay, so real quick. Yeah. I don't quite remember. So, uh, the, <clears throat> that room that we were in. Yes. With, uh, with, with, uh, with Locke. Yep. Did we need to do something with that room and this key? I don't quite remember. Yes, you need to, there, he said, bring the planar essence to this room, to the chamber. Yeah, all of them. Okay. There's one thing I want to try to do with this yep. power, this majestic power whilst yep. I have it. Yep. I want to reset everyone's luck. <gasps> oh, oh, my oh, 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 laughable how easy that is you don't even know what luck is and you don't know how to restore it but your power is so immense that simply wishing for doom not to touch your family you can tell this this manifests as every single player goes back up to maximum luck Including Slump, who Including is there? Including Slump. Slump? What the fuck? You feel that impending doom lift. It's not coming for you anymore. <laughs> oh. you, there is no doom of Slump coming. And you can feel the power of hope. That power of hope that has helped you so many times when something felt like it was going wrong and you hoped and wished it would change and the luck was spent, you feel that hope return as you go back to maximum luck. Nice. Fuck and then yes. After after I feel that and I see, I would assume a little tiny smile on slump. I assume time is of the essence here. Yeah. And I want to pop my wings. Yep. Surround the party and yep. I'm going to take us back to that room. Absolutely. Wow. I so, want to protest this. Are we just letting him walk away? Are we letting Volos walk? There is no protest. It just happens. Like, Galdrick doesn't have control over this power yet. It's like he hasn't learned how to control it, and his thoughts are manifesting into reality. The power is beyond anything anyone can ever even comprehend, and his thoughts and simplest desires are manifesting in reality instantly. So I as accidentally he this, think of Lou with bigger jugs. Oh my god. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> I, want, I, want I want Slump to like, I imagine that she probably uncomfortably like lift her arms up just because she's surprised at this sudden change. <laughs> Suddenly my back hurts. Suddenly I want your back Slump hurts to, like, a bit. I want, I want Slump to like oh god, stare so at her. Sorry. 
and he and he's staring at her chest and just like staring directly at her chest and uh you start to wonder what the fuck he's thinking and then he puts a hand d- gently on her shoulder and says you okay <laughs> it's a weird day it's basically uh, a very weird uh, day uh, bad tum tum <laughs> Sometimes like this tum tum aches too. There's some I, sort of indigestion, I think. Okay. I just want to like start thinking about random shit. I'm talking like trees and they just start sprouting oh, up. Oh yeah, I think absolutely. Of, like, a lake and all of a sudden there's water. Guys, we gotta go! <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> trees just start exploding from the side of the room. A lake just starts filling the entire room. Fucking, there's like pigs and sheep floating outside in space through the window. You can see, like, what is your brain, Galdrick? <laughs> uh, I don't. Know. Don't answer. Yeah. <laughs> he's right. He's right. He's right. Um. Um. Oh, Galdrick. The marching oh, Galdrick. band just randomly comes through. Everyone's okay. Right. So, 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 sorry. 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 That's me. That's me. <laughs> and stupid and ugly. I'm sorry. So no matter, so, no matter what, what I say, I'm talking. There you go. It's fixed. Hello. Yeah. Okay, there we go. We're, we've teleported. The guy can't stop you to try to like take yeah. advantage of this. To okay. Yeah. No, the teleport just happens. He's so out of control with this power that he wasn't expecting and doesn't understand. But the thing is, you can't actually go to the chamber. Yeah. The yeah we, chamber, go, we go to the. We go to the bar. You guys go to the bar. The whole the whole travel time there. The Goldrick's mind is just manifesting. <laughs> the whole trip. <laughs> <laughs> just the whole fucking way. oh my god <laughs> and uh sure enough you guys wind up back at the bar and you guys aren't at the entrance you guys are actually just straight up in the bar itself and uh, I think as you guys kind of pop into existence, Lou too kind of like falls backwards off his chair. Um, he's like, what was that? Oh, oh, what? Hey, oh, how'd you get here? I am everything that is God. Um, mm-hmm. a gold trick there. Uh, that's look, that's looking a little unstable. Uh, Mr. Locke, would you agree? <laughs> that looks, it looks a little unstable to me. <laughs> Why are you still asking me? Get him in. Get, get him in the room. All right, Mr. I'm Mr. essentially just singing, Genie. You ain't never had a friend like me. <laughs> <laughs> um, Lou too puts a shoulder or puts a hand on your shoulder, um, and is like, um, all right, you'll need to come with me. Uh, this is looking like it's a situation that's about to escalate pretty quickly here. Uh, when if he you'll touches just... me, I want his entire skin to turn purple. Uh, and yes, Lou too immediately turns purple. Oh God, I am so sorry. All right, this is this is becoming a problem that uh, is going to be, uh, well, it's going to be need to, to, be, to be fixed uh, pretty much right away. Yeah, uh, Kirby shits so his pants room. wherever he is. Go, 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 uh, absolutely, yeah. and you, the entire town of Quinton shit their pants. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone in the town immediately violently shits their pants. Um, <laughs> and uh, Lou too immediately just starts like ushering you guys towards the chamber oh my god um, as we like start going towards the chamber i want to be like wait 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 wait! i know i can do this i know i can do this and i like i like start thinking and i look at jake and i say jake open uh, put out your hands okay and i just want like way too much med gel to just like 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 containers of med gel just to okay fall <laughs> i think i think it's containers of med gel and just loose med gel <laughs> just okay around. yeah yeah just just any any yeah. like yeah, absolutely. It's just a giant. It's like it's like med gel soup just comes pouring out. Some in yeah. capsules, some not in capsules, and it just kind of like just drenches you, Jake. Like as all we, good. As, okay. As I assume we're like walking to the chamber, I'm just trying to think of like shit that we might need <laughs> yeah. in the future. Like wait, uh, med gel. Ah, uh, maybe some money. Ah, uh, uh, you probably haven't eaten in a few days. A pound of human flesh. Here you go. Ah. Uh, fuck, spaceship! 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 Oh, no, no, maybe I don't. Maybe I, we don't do a spaceship in here. I I fix Lou's spaceship that's in my pocket. Oh shit! Lou cries nice. for days. Oh, oh yeah. And I fix the one that's inside my pocket. Every time you do this, nobody else can tell. Like you guys, you guys just see stuff popping into existence. Galdrick, you feel this 
horrific feeling of reality start to tearing it start starting to tear itself apart as you continue to use this power without understanding what it is. Oh, yeah. oh <laughs> my like god. Start, oh jeez. Uh, okay, let's get in there. Let's get in there. <laughs> uh, wait, wait. Perfect what? sandwich. Mm. Blue two, get him in the room. Oh, He's gonna drop. Ah, that was good. Perfectly moist. Um. And uh, you guys head towards the door. Wait, 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 wait. Oh my god. Five gifted subs for text message 314. <laughs> <laughs> that one might take so a little weird. bit of time. <laughs> and then, and then I, okay, and then I go into the room. Okay. And uh, as you guys enter the, um, as you guys enter the chamber, you uh you are you all have your back turned as you as you're going through the door into uh the place just called the chamber and then uh mr Locke, you see something uh i guess <gasps> terrifying I one more i thought of one more thing can i do one more thing <sighs> okay it, you can say yay or nay because it's a little powerful. Uh, what is it? Because I, because I, I, you know what? It's it's a it's it's not powerful. It's 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 fun. I want to bring back Golden Boys. Oh. You can't. Damn. Oh. Different yeah. I know. Oh, yeah. I different. Know. They're different from a different try. color. If yeah. I can, if I can bring back Gold Boy, you know what I would. You know. <laughs> uh, I feel like Lou senses that you were doing that and is very grateful <laughs> I, think, I think a little a little white ink guy shows up <laughs> he'll do this is carl i can't use this anymore we're all gonna die okay <laughs> well you guys will i'll be fine i'm a planer too. <laughs> yeah lou you now have carl oh hey carl uh it, we'll talk later yeah it also can't talk it's just like a weird puppet I'll talk at you later. <laughs> Can it look exactly like the puppet that Michael Scott gives to uh, the accountant? Oh my on the, uh, god! <laughs> yeah, sure. About. Oh my god! Yep. Yeah. Um. Okay. And you guys then start entering the chamber, but as you are, uh, Mister Locke, you see something. I guess horrifying, but not completely unexpected. The rest of the party has their backs turned and you see a slim line of red show up as a portal opens to the red ink. And as soon as your mind registers that fact, it's too late. Volos is charging out of the portal, screaming and roaring oh. oh god and his hand oh, boy. is lifted <laughs> with Can... an you guys can't see it you have no, no way you have no concept of knowing that this is happening it's absolutely silent room, right you're not inside the room yet okay and he is coming out with his hand raised and you can see that what he has wielded is an apocalyptic Weave. This is Volos using all of his knowledge, malice, and power to destroy the party in oh. a single spell. Oh my god. Do I get any sort of reaction? You here? guys have no idea it's happening. Mr. Locke, you are the only one who is able to act. I think what you hear throughout the bar is just and then a sparkling energy shield wraps around the party in Lutu and Mr. Locke yells up and just says, no, not today, sir. Not today. Huh. Wow. Did you see this? 
And I imagine that would be enough to turn the party around to kind of see what is happening as the shield comes around them. Yeah, the party turns and Volos is not blinking. He's not registering anything. He sees the shield, which has given him just a moment's pause. I'm sorry, sweetie. This establishment is invite only. And I'm pretty damn sure you're not on the list. But that's okay. We can take... We can clear this up with Zoe. Hmm. She says you're not on the list. I'm gonna have you have to ask you to leave. Now! And this bolt comes firing out of Mr. Locke's weapon. And Volos was so focused on this attack to destroy the party, he doesn't realize that this was a coin that was used. This is a prime ink weave. They summon powers beyond creation, ancient powers of the prime ink, and not even a planar key can stop what comes out of Mr. Locke's barrel. Lou, get him in the back. I'll deal with this. Lou rushes the party into the chamber. Round two. And these bolts just start unloading. Volos puts his hands up to try to stop them as they penetrate through his shields, through his weaves. He tries to deflect them. He tries to block them. He puts up barriers. He tries to catch them. And they start blowing through him. He goes flying through the back wall of the bar as more and more of these projectiles just start annihilating Volos. He's blown out into the void of space. And these prime ink weaves start tearing Volos, the planar key of red, to shreds. He roars in anger, roars in pain. Pain he's never felt. Pain he can't stop. And as he floats in the inky blackness of space, just before he feels himself torn to pieces, He opens a portal back to the red ink. Ooh. The bar looks a little worse for wear. Some of the glass is destroyed. There's a gaping hole in the side of the bar. But Volos has been, if not killed, definitely defeated. And you guys are inside the chamber. You know that you're safe here. You know that this chamber exists between the strands of ink. Nothing can teleport in here. The only way in is through the door that you just came through. You heard the explosions. You saw the weapon that Mr. Locke was wielding and you saw Volos getting his ass kicked as the door closed and sealed you guys within the chamber. Not Mr. Locke, Mr. Locke still outside fixing the bar. So we, but we saw Volos disappear. You didn't see him disappear. You saw him losing the battle. As soon as we got in then, um, Lou would say to Lou, we can't just leave Mr. Locke out there. There's, we we can't trust him alone with, uh, with Volos. I don't want Volos to be hurting him. I, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be, uh, we're, oh, you've got your, oh, sorry. I wouldn't be worrying about, uh. Uh, Mr. Locke, uh, we thought, uh, we thought honestly, Volos might try something like that, to be totally honest. Uh, 
we, uh, we figured he's got no better chance than right now. You see, once we've got a planar essence, we're kind of on even footing with him, right? So once we've got this planar essence, he can't do anything like that again. But as long as he's got planar key and we're not, this was his chance. We thought he might try that, so... Mr. Locke stocked up on a couple extra uh, of them coins, and uh, he's using Prime Ink out there. Now, it's going to draw a lot of attention, so we're going to need to... Uh, move? Maybe move? I, I mean, move's kind of an interesting concept, as the, the, this, this, lo this place is kind of where we need it to be anyways, but let's just say with the kind of attention we just drew with... Uh, with uh, all the use of the prime ink out there, they're going to be forces who can find it no matter where it moves. So we're going to need to do some, I guess, remodeling, I think. So I guess, uh, I, so uh, Mr. Goldrick, it looks like you're, yeah. you, you are the planar key now? Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. All right, well, that's, no, I mean, that's a crazy thing to do. How are you still, <laughs> I'm not really sure how you're still all together. Thing. Yeah, me neither. Um, me neither. And then I think about splitting apart, and I want to like turn into an abstract piece of art. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> All right, I think. Uh, I think. I, and then I think of myself back to normal. I just start slopping oh, meta gel on him. Mom <laughs> <laughs> uh, was just standing there screaming. Ah! Just horrified. <laughs> um, and uh, he's like, "All right, now I don't know if you can do this, but I need you to give up the. Well, I guess we've got two choices." Uh, you can stand on the on the. Uh, so I've built a couple pedestals in here. I've color coded okay. them to make sure that we don't okay. fuck it up. I walk over to the red one. I don't step on it, but I start walking towards it. All right, no, no, don't, don't, Ooh, don't touch that. I want to have like don't. one foot over it, like no, when it's not on the touch ground it. yet. Wait, 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 I wait, no, what? do not oh, touch oh, it. Oh, nope. oh, oh, yeah. oh, okay. I take a step back. I That's the wrong one. one. And also, uh, if you stand on it, you're not getting off it. What? Uh, yeah, it's kind of a one way trip. So. Oh, yeah, it's a one way trip to, to be on the pedestal. Um, what do you mean one way trip? Like it like it takes me somewhere or I'm oh, just never getting off that pedestal. You're ever? just never getting off that pedestal. Oh, uh, yeah. Don't worry. I've got a horrible idea then. Uh, well, I mean, OK, just hold on before you do the horrible idea. If there's a way you could just kind of like pop out the essence, just kind of pop it out. No, 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 no. no? Guys, I want to look at everyone else. First off, this is my power now. Okay. I don't like this. That's bad. Secondly, <laughs> this is worrisome. Oh. Secondly, okay. Secondly, I answer to a higher power. Okay. And what Kurt told you is accurate. My job is to bring apart the uh, bring upon the apocalypse. Um, but it's not what you think. It's not that I'm here to kill everybody. It's that I'm here to kill the right people, if you will. So imagine you, uh, if, if you can, the world is going to end, uh, one way or another, one way that it ends results in what I'm assuming is absolute nothingness. We're all gone. All of us, all of us. Another way the apocalypse happens is I'm assuming life is born anew. I don't know. That's my guess. So I have to make sure that the right apocalypse happens. Otherwise, we're all gone. And with what Mr. Lu Tu here has told us is, I think that the way we create this, I think my mission is to create the proper, I look at Lu Tu and I'm like, I'm gonna be honest, I was half listening. I was I was on Quaaludes when you were talking last time, man. <laughs> uh, but you were talking about how we need to connect things, you know, reunite all of the inks. Obviously we're all kind of on the same page, yep. right? I kind of like exactly. shake my head. Yep. I'm, like, yep. I'm like, yeah. I think that's the apocalypse that I'm supposed to make happen. I think as you say that, you get a message from the butler that says, oh, Mr. Goldrick, I've just got, oh, look at this. I've got new, I've got a new letter. It's a, it says, oh, mission clarif. Oh, apparently the movie they read to you was a little bit too vague. Apparently some lines got crossed. It turns out the apocalypse you're supposed to have happen is kind of a, like a rebinding of all the inks. I'm glad I got to this to you. Uh, so please make sure that that's what you're working towards. I'm so glad I could get to do this to you in time. 
Galdrick being the white planer ink right now, he <laughs> yeah. wants to shoot the butler in the foot. Uh, the butler abs like you you hear the gunshot. Oh god, oh oh god! How did that where did that even come from? I don't I didn't think I could even feel pain. I hang up. I fucking hate this guy. <laughs> I fucking hate this guy. Okay, all right. So, anyways, I do think that uh, there is a method to the madness, and I think we have to make sure that we make this happen the right way, right? So, you need this essence. That's that's what we're getting. Uh, that's right. We need. To, we're this is. We're gonna put the essence on the pedestal, and uh, I believe we can do the kind of rebinding right in this chamber. Okay. 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 I've got it. Okay. All right, but we're gonna, okay. I see what you're saying though. I need to step on that, but I need to not step on that is what you're saying. Well, I'm saying if you could just put Ooh. maybe your essence on it, if there was a way to just pop out the essence and put that I on start it. Unzipping, I start unzipping my pants. Oh, no, 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 no need for that. <laughs> oh, no oh, need, oh, no, oh, what? Oh. there's no need for that. No, if you just pop, oh, yeah. no, no. Just like hey, that. Oh, I get it. I yeah. got it, I got it. And I call the butler. <laughs> Oh, yes, yes, so I'm just bending. I need you to up. send me the best building you have. Uh, well, I've got good news. We've They've just come off the line. These are the building 2.0s. Good, give me the best one you got. We've got the, I've got this brand new, sp it's got, oh, it smells so good. It's got that fresh out of the package smell. I'll just pop them out here, yes. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> yes. Oh, 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 oh no. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, what's happening? I dropped him. I'm sorry. Okay, I'll get you the second best building we've got. Oh I dropped God. the first one. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have opened that right near the staircase. That was my bad. All right, that one's my bad. I'll go get another one. I'll get the second best one we've got. Can you... Um... <laughs> Big boy. Uh, that was perfect. Hey, Send it down. <laughs> All right, sending it down. And it's down. <laughs> Hello, big boy. How you hey. doing? You okay? Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So listen, uh, listen. Do you want? Do you want? Do you want uh, unmeasurable uh, power? Uh, uh, do you? Huh? Do you want me to? I can give you ultimate power. I can turn you into a god. Okay, if you're comfortable with that. And Bill starts massaging your shoulders. <laughs> I'm like kneading them a little bit. I kind of, I, I kind of <laughs> look at Lou so too, and I'm just kind of like, can we? Can I? Can I? Are we? me onto him i mean yeah if you, on the pedestal yeah if you if you give him the planar essence and then stick him on the pedestal that'll basically be it can i put him on the pedestal first and then give it to him because him moving is kind of a problem i know i don't think that's how it works i think it really needs to go into him first and then and then and then we'll put him on the pedestal i don't i think it kind of it'll just kind of lock him in place if we put him on there you know we can put an essence in there after the fact Okay, giving him ultimate power before locking him in place. I'm a little bit worried. Really yes, I'm that a little bit like worried about that. I look at Bill as he's just like massaging me <laughs> awkwardly. <laughs> this seems... What are you hey, doing? Don't you want this? Is it this what you asked for? <laughs> no, that's not what I asked for. This is... No, that's not what, what I... What do you want, you? the boy? I do yeah. for you. You say to me, I do for you. No problem. Okay, go stand in front of that white one, with that white little block over there. Okay. Hey, Galdrick, I got a plan if you want. Yeah. You just have slump lag hold him up over it i can use that fucking fish hook shit pull it out of you into him and then slump can just slap his ass down on the pets i kind of want to look at lou too will that work can he hover over it uh i think that'll work yeah as long as he's not touching it if uh if the big guy there just kind of holds a uh, little man over the over the thing and then you kind of zip zap and yeah that'll work splat uh, him slop, on. slop pick up little man yeah okay give me a little guy <laughs> he's so tall. He's like Bill, but so much bigger. <laughs> You're coming with Slump. Slump's going to take good care of you. <laughs> you promise? Yeah, you'll see. It's going to be so fun. You're going to get to play with all the other little men. What about the little lady? Uh, Slump's not sure. I just give a thumbs up immediately. I'm like... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All the little ladies. Maybe you'll get to meet a gilding. Oh you God. promise me to me? Yes. I pr Slump promises. Same with Teeny Todd. Yeah. And then, wait. Where, so where is Slump? Slump is putting him on the pedestal? Just, Just kind of so holding him over him it. Over. You're, oh, you're kind see. of okay. two hands over him. You're, you're hovering over it. So pretty much we're going to transfer the essence, essence from me to him. And then after that, you're just going to drop him onto the pedestal. <laughs> okay. I mostly wanted to test this, that like weave. Because I know I could tether shit to like the black hole. But am I able to like pull people's essence out with it? 
because I wanted to can see if I could use that late. Uh, I oh, think I, don't know. I think I think basically I, this 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 works narratively so well we can just do it like this. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to establish precedent so I could do it again later. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, damn it, no, Peruni. All right, well, in fact, right, you need go. the dagger, which is gone. So uh, we're kind of fudging the rules here, anyways. So I gave it to Slump because I was gonna stab Kerr in the face with this, and then stuff happened differently. <laughs> Sally. So yeah, so you can. I, you, yeah, uh, we can do that here. Okay, sounds good. I will. Uh, I. I have no idea how to do it. I guess I just think about transferring my power to building. <laughs> I mean, I basically, I realized how bad it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically, it's just going to be, uh, uh, basically, it's just going to be that like the tether kind of goes from you to, uh, we can tether like you to, like, basically, you'll be one under the tether, building will be the other end of the tether, and it'll just kind of get sucked from you into building. Okay. Um, uh, attack check uh, discord, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, so sure enough. That terrifies me. So, <laughs> so, uh, so describe what's happening again. So basically, so here's, here's the scene. Yep. Slump picks up building yep. and holds him over the white pedestal. And then uh, Jake kind of stands on the other side so that Galdrick is on one side of the pedestal, Jake is on the other, and Bill Ding is in the middle. And uh, Jake uses this weave, this siphoning weave that, that can move the essence. And uh, for whatever reason, he's able to do it now. It's still, he's still got a little bit, little bit left from when he used it before. It's just he's got one thread of it still hanging on. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> uh, and so sure I enough, want, I want, so it's, just let me know when, when Bill is like made the planner. Exactly. Yeah. And then, and then, yeah, sure enough, you feel just this last little thread, you yank on it and Goldrick, you feel that almighty ultimate power of creation over everything on this plane of existence, leave you and slump. You feel the building that you're holding start vibrating as it takes on the white planar essence okay and it has it I now want, okay i want slump to just be holding bill and yeah. bill is just so slump is like holding him like a baby like he's got his hands on either side and bill is just sitting there with like his hands resting his little hands resting on top of uh slump's gigantic <laughs> fucking bulldozer claws yeah and um I want them to just be looking at each other and uh, Slump is staring at him very concentratedly like he's like studying him and Bill's just staring back and Bill just kind of goes <laughs> and Bill turns around and looks at Galdrick and like like a child who's like I don't know you know touched a touched a candle or something like that and <laughs> yeah. has the look the wide-eyed look followed instantaneously by the complete hysterical crying face that goes Slump doesn't want to drop a Mr. Teeny Tom don't make Slump say goodbye to the little man you're you're not gonna say goodbye to the little man. Once he's there, he'll stay there forever, and we can visit whenever he whenever we want. But if you don't do it, he's going he's gonna explode. <laughs> you promise to bring Slump back. I promise whenever you want. Pinky promise. I pinky promise. Don't say don't worry, big boy. We'll need, come back to say hello to you sometime, okay? <laughs> You promise? Yeah, big boy. Bending, promise to you. And then uh, Slump, or I, I, as like just before Slump lets go, Building snaps his fingers. Okay. And nothing, nothing, nothing noticeable happens. And then okay. Slump drops him. Yep. <laughs> and little Building kind of like arms kind of spread eagle or whatever out to the sides. t -pose. T pose, like building in the perfect T pose, to toes pointed down as they were just kind of hanging by gravity, falls towards the pedestal. And as, as soon as the first toe touches the pedestal, building freezes in that exact pose. 
absolutely frozen in place. And Galdrick? Yeah. You get a call from the butler. Yeah. Hello. Um, Mr. Goldrick, uh, I don't really know how to say this. Mm, well, we just had that brand new line of buildings made, right? Uh-huh. Uh, we're reading a, per well, permanent zero of building reserves somehow. And when Galdrick feels his pocket inside, he he finds a tiny keychain sized bus. Are you are you kidding me? Uh help. Butler. Um yes. Uh, uh find them? Well, that's, I mean, the thing is, is like, we've either got them or we're making some more, but it's like, we can't anymore. There's none, there's none left. And we just can't make any more anymore. Uh, any, un, anymore, unfortunately. That's about it. To be, to just sum it up, there's no more. And the, there's going to be no more uh, forever anymore. Well, what the fuck? I don't, listen, I don't know what kind of powers you're playing with down there, but somehow this, it's all gone now for, it's all gone. I don't even, it's gone in a way I don't even understand. I mean, I, I know how to make them myself, but this now is, I can't. This is going on your record. You know that, right? Oh, please, come on now. This, one, this, this is going on your This record. one wasn't even my fault. Because now I have to... Uh, apparently, you ran out of bills, so now I have to think of a new fucking... Uh, he was such a good... Uh, it was good! I, I agree. Well, I mean, it There's was... There's no one better than now! I mean, it was passable. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. It was pretty passable. It's better than you! Oh, I see. We're back to that old... Back to that yeah. old... Okay, great. That's wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Goldrick. And, and then... In the middle of this conversation, from Galdrick's pocket, you hear a little... I want, I want to pull up the keychain and look at it like like ever so slightly. I want to like look through the windows like, what the fuck? I, Galdrick he wants to like he he still has the very creepy you know, cry and stare and he just looks at the and he looks he's, he's crying whilst doing the stare like oh god I'm so happy. You're the butler. Here you go. <laughs> hey, big boy, I ever tell you about the time I make a foot soup? Oh my god, so good. Oh, Let me tell goodness. you every single ingredient. First, you add some salt, oh, then a no. bit more salt, then a bit more salt, then right. a bit more salt. Why would you do this? Then a bit more salt, 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 then a bit more salt. Next time, don't lose him! <laughs> oh my god. Alright. Yeah, build... I have a perfect emote for this, actually. <laughs> 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 That's totally true. <laughs> uh, okay. Building reserves are back. Building the, et the eternal ultimate Oh, Planar essence. <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate form of power in our existence is now neatly seated atop the white altar. And as he sits there, you see this, um, this kind of white light. Uh, although it almost seems more like white ink kind of starts to seep from that uh, from that altar. Oh, you guys can't see it. Why is it not showing? Well, you've been up here the whole time. 
Oh my god, I don't know why that was hidden. Can you guys see it now? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, you guys have been up here the whole time. Sweet room. Sweet room, right? Man, I sure wish you could have seen that the whole time. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> um, you see this line of white ink start kind of making its way over to all of the other altars. Ooh. And you now officially have the first of five pieces. Holy uh, shit. And uh, Lou, Lou too, kind of turns to you guys and says, well, uh, I've, uh, I've picked quite a few uh, adventurers in my time. I've been around for a little while and I've, I've picked many an adventurer who's been tasked with basically the same thing and well, nobody's ever actually been able to do this much. We've never, ever had the white planar essence in here. I had to build this uh, pedestal brand new from scratch just because I thought you might succeed. I guess, uh, good, good job. I'm glad you didn't open with the boy. You sure have known a lot of people who have died trying to do this already. And you tried to recruit us earlier. No, I'm pretty sure I mentioned it. And if I didn't, it was kind of implied. Um, well, I think probably Mr. Locke's got the bar all cleaned up now. Um, would you, would you guys like to go and maybe have a drink and relax and, uh, maybe get an item or two? Yeah. Yeah. Because that yeah. item As saved my ass. <laughs> Literally saved the entire universe as far yep. as we can tell. Yeah, I want to... Like guys were walking back, like, yeah, guys, just so we're clear, like, when, when I, when I was like, you know, hey, let's bring up Volos, that was the plan from Oh, great. Smart. No problem. Yeah. Yeah, I was hoping I could get Volos's power too. That way, so, you know, two for one. You know, a two for, you know? Uh, it didn't work out though. Alas. Not one. I don't As think Volos is going to like us very much though. Yeah, I think that's kind of it. <laughs> I think yeah. that relationship is kind of it. Oh, oh, man. Oh, no. I, mean, I, can, <laughs> I can put in the legwork, try to salvage it. You know, I don't couples therapy i'm not sure <laughs> <laughs> i reach for my gun that is done as we were walking by these like uh chains of white ink to the other yeah yeah did was that did we feel anything as we were going through or is it a tangible is it like a beam of light or how did it interact with us um so i think you guys you didn't uh, it's going along the floor actually it's kind of creeping along the floor like a floor like a little creek of literal white ink um and it actually is white ink and you can all see it it's not a representation of white ink or anything like that it is literally white ink um and uh i imagine like you guys all stepped over it like a uh, lou kind of like as you guys were walking lou kind of like motioned that you should step over it and not step into it awesome thank you and you guys are back in the bar. Locke, are you okay? <sighs> Can you tell us what that was like? Maybe what the hell happened? Oh, uh, well, you were walking into the back of the room and I saw... Well, he seemed intent on destroying all of you. He oh, was... that's... What a joker. He was uh, holding quite the, the weave. Uh, in fact, I'm, I'm pretty sure it would not only evaporate you, but probably the bar and us. Oh, oh yeah, that sounds about oh. right. Oh. Okay. Yep. That was okay. what we like to call big magic. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. Don't see that every day. Thank Dalgic God. has like, I told you so, disappointed mother crossed arms and he's just looking at the entirety of the party. <laughs> <laughs> um, Lou kind of, uh, Lou too kind of looks at you guys and says, all right, now I've got to go prepare something for, uh, for what kind is coming next. I'm going to go back into the chamber. Uh, this is going to be a little bit complicated. I'm going to go deal with that. Uh, Mr. Mr. Locke, if you'd be so kind as to... Uh, uh, maybe serve up uh, some drinks for our weary and successful uh, adventurers, and maybe, maybe they've earned an item or two. 
<laughs> Overstated. Way ahead of you. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Uh, would you mind uh, pouring me maybe just a shot of whiskey uh, to, to wet my whistle just a little bit? All right. I'll take care of our guests first. Perfect. Excellent. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. So, sorry for the um, theatrics. What can I get you guys? Uh, you know, I'm not... I don't drink much, but after that, I could just take a nice cold one. Yeah, y'all got, like, a bathroom? I just got pee. Yeah, a bathroom's <laughs> on the other side of the bar. All right, uh, be right back. Okay. There you go. And... All right, nice. In the glass, or still in the bottle? Ah, uh, bottle's fine. All right, there you go. Can Lou intercept Cheers. Jake quickly before he leaves the room? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Jake, I don't mean to interrupt. <laughs> this is important business. But you're not gonna, I mean, are you gonna contact Bolos? Are you gonna, how do you feel? Oh, he was, that was real. Oh, life. he actually had to go to the washroom. <laughs> I gotcha. Okay. He's so good at roleplay. I know. No, totally. That guy was there. I think let's hold that for when he gets back. Because that was, that was a good idea. <laughs> so, when Jake gets back and he puts a box on the bar, I think you more than deserve this. And it's that same box with all the magical items that you pulled out last time. Oh, yeah. Uh, mukbang bowl. He looks, he looks squarely at Goldrick. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you doing oh, okay, my, Mr. Oh, my Panther. God. Oh, my God. I That's forgot about the mukbang bowl. bowl. I get so happy. <laughs> he, um, like, just... As your eyes get, go wide as platters, you just hear the, the finger snap, and it's already. How about Lou? Slump? Uh, what are you asking, Slump? If you would like anything to eat and drink, or, you know, oh. just get right down to business and pull something out of the box. Slump? What? Slump would like. Slump's got. Can Slump eat? Five whole watermelons. Sloppy f five sloppy watermelons? Fast magic talents. Okay. Okay. And uh just <laughs> thinking what he thought he heard. <laughs> 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 no, 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 like, I really hope this is right. <laughs> like... Whatever pops up in front of Slumpy looks delighted. <laughs> <laughs> Man, he's, he really had to go. Yeah. Oh yeah, man, it's been a minute, sorry. You wash your hands? I mean, yeah, ish. No, no. I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> so, who wants to pick first? I wanna be like, I'll, I'll, I'll go first this time. I wanna like, be drinking the beer, like my like it's up to my lips and I'm like, mm, and I just reach my hands forward. Nice. Uh, 1d20. All right. Uh, you pull out an item and they look like a, it looks like a single silk glove with a long cuff and very fine embroidery on it. And, uh, Mr. Lock goes, oh, it's been a while since I saw this. Um, it's a duelist glove. Um, you throw the glove at an enemy and they have no choice but to attack you. I kind of look sad and I look at Slump. I'm like, you want it? <laughs> <laughs> Slump claps his hands. Yeah, yeah. Well, does Slump still get a pick? Yeah, you, you still get a pick. Okay, yeah, yeah. Slump gets that now. No, no, fuck you. I hold on to it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, you never know. Well, why offer to Slump then, you jerk? I'm sorry. Wow. Slump's gonna get something so cool and you're not even gonna get to look at it. It's gonna be Slump's Slump's okay. little secret. Remember, idiot. you can't. 
<laughs> you can destroy it and pick again if you want. Oh, can I? Yeah. I throw it across the room. <laughs> now the chair has to fight you. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Can I pick again? Is that yeah? One d twenty. Yep. Oh fuck yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, you pull out a really simple looking uh pocket watch with a gold, and uh, Mr. Luck like picks it up or like holds it in his hand a little bit and is just like. I'm not sure which one this is this oh this is gold okay um this is the pocket watch of three seconds ago um basically what happens is when you sustain something fatal the watch explodes and moves you three seconds back with the full knowledge of what attack or what killed you i kind of grin and i'm like that's more my style <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one Okay, now I need somebody to remind me that I have this. <laughs> <laughs> Someone write months. it down in the inventory. All right. Next. Sl slump like pushes Galdrick out of the way. Me, 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 me. All right, Slump, here you go. Ooh. So, you pull out a small monocle. Yes! <laughs> and uh, Mr. Lot goes, Oh, the monocle of wealth. Um, so, the monocle makes you appear as you are like the part of the financial elite. You ooze appearance in wealth and import, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> exactly. You get it. Literally okay. is already wearing it in the emote. <laughs> yeah. It was meant to be. It man. was literally meant. I was. I am so happy you pulled this item. So, yeah, the way this works is it basically like you just are undeniably immediately visibly part of the wealthy elite. Oh, fuck. And you, yes. get, to, you get to operate with that not like you don't have to bluff as if you're part of the financial elite you get to act as if that is already the case when you put the monocle on you are already accepted as part of the wealthy elite oh my god fuck <laughs> yes man <laughs> i can't believe you got the item that is legitimately on your <laughs> emote so good. i imagine that uh mr slump would like to keep that Yep, so I'm yeah. definitely gonna be keeping that shit. You bet your ass, boy. Like all those times that you do those 200 IQ moments where you try to convince them, like now literally you can <laughs> pop the monocle on when you do that. <laughs> all right, Lou, Jake. I'll go, I'll go. Hit it up. Uh, okay, let's see here. Oh, I gotta roll. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Uh, so you reach in and you, you feel something very plush and soft. And All when right. you pull it out, it's a teddy. <laughs> and Mr. Luck looks at it and is like, oh, that's cute. Um, that's the teddy bear of pacification. Um, basically, you throw the teddy bear at, at someone. Obviously, someone probably mad at you. And they'll be pacified for a short period of time. And they can't return any attacks. Um, as it holds the bear. Um, Lou, like, crushes the bear <laughs> <laughs> to her chest after everything that's kind of just gone on, <laughs> you know? Um, and, uh, she goes, that's, that's good, that's good, thank you, that's good, thank you, that's fine, that's good, thank you. Yes, you want to keep it? <laughs> I'll keep it, that's okay, I'll keep it, I'll just keep it, I'll keep it safe, I'll keep it with me, so thank you. <laughs> So the way I had originally designed this was back on the old monster of the week rules where like they would attack when you attacked. Um, but now it's just going to cause them to uh, miss a full round of attacks uh, as they just hug the teddy bear. <laughs> Can't help that. Exactly. 
All right, Jake, you're the last one. Yeah. All right. So you reach in and you feel something cold, but laden with small little stones. And when you pull it out, it's a silver loop laden with diamond. And, All right. Uh, and uh, Mr. Luck looks at it and goes, oh my. Huh. Uh, okay. Um, so that's the ring of almost invisibility. Um, when you wear it, you become almost invisible. Um, like barely perceivable. If someone sees you put it on, they can still basically see where you are. Um, but if you move, you become noticeable. Um, but if you have it on when someone enters a room, they just don't notice you. So, you know, be kind of like Predator Invisibility, if you ever seen that movie. Way bet, way old Earth movie. Okay. Seems like it would go really well with the karate thing. No, I'm in, I'm in. I'll slap that thing on. Dude, how did you guys all get literally, like, your <laughs> emote? We got, we got hiding Jake. We got fancy... <laughs> Go uh, <laughs> slump. We got hugging comfy Lou, and uh, I guess we got popping back and understanding what's going on. Galdrick, <laughs> Galdrick that dying. Was harder to illustrate. Galdrick dying and then coming back, waving and saying, "Hi, I'm Galdrick." Still not dead. <laughs> Still not dead. Well, that's pretty I spectacular. <laughs> Well, I hope you're all happy with uh, your gifts. <laughs> you certainly earned them. I just, I'm, I'm like, oh, wait, never mind. I don't want to fuck with the pocket watch. Never mind. I'm Slump. not gonna fuck with the watch. <laughs> <laughs> Slump, Slump is like intentionally just making it seem even more, uh, even more pronounced than it is, and goes. <laughs> And they put something on the mouth and goes, Hey, yes, now chopping Jupiter Blast. Now, the effect of the monocle, yeah, like it doesn't matter if you know the effect, and it doesn't matter if you see him put it on. Literally, as soon as Slump puts on the monocle, you all realize you have no idea how much money Slump has. <laughs> like you, you, you've never seen Slump's bank account and you suddenly realize wait a second Slump was a minor like he's probably fucking loaded dude is like dude could probably buy a continent and you are all immediately struck with the realization that Slump is probably no Slump is definitely rich as fuck guys <laughs> I'm kind of like nodding along like a thirsty 16 year old I'm like yeah slump. yeah absolutely <laughs> Sl slump is looking and he's completely forgotten that it makes him look wealthy he's just enjoying like looking fancy he's not processing, <laughs> processing the fact that his party's staring at him like laughing his walls <laughs> you guys kind of feel like you know what he's talking like you or you know you think he knows what he's talking about it's it's big money stuff man you don't you don't know stocks and bonds and <laughs> stocks and bonds and hell's off on the table <laughs> <laughs> Jake moves away <laughs> I was gonna say while everyone's paying attention I want to put the bracelet on and just be really still I just move my head real slow to see if anyone can see me. <laughs> I, think, I think Mr. Locke plays with this. It's just like, oh, only the finest spirits. <laughs> As, as soon as this happens, Slump becomes distinctly aware of the lack of Jake, and he's well, yes, well, you see back in my day, you tell me how to give a fellow to boot pick himself up. And he, he takes off the monocle and goes, where don't go, Slump, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, anyone who didn't see uh, Jake put it on, like, he's fucking gone, as long as he's not moving. And when he's still... He's completely gone. And if he moves his head a little bit, you guys see a little bit of that weird distortion like the predator, and you can kind of see where his head is, but 
The rest of him, like he's fucking gone, man. Lou's worried that when she sees that little, like little shimmer of movement, she's worried that it's Volos again. Um, <laughs> yeah. So she goes, oh god, and she throws a glass um, at the shimmering area. Oh, I thought you were gonna throw the the the. I know, the I teddy almost did. It. <laughs> it's ruined. Well, I guess you see me like try to catch the glass, but I drop a peanut butter sandwich, which becomes visible when I lose my touch. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry, blah blah, Nedge. No, nah, it's me. I was just having fun with it. And Galdrick, you saw all this happen three seconds ago. This is all old news to you. Uh, Wait a minute. I always see. No, 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 no. I'm just fucking with you. I'm just fucking with you. Don't give me that power. No, I would not. I would never do that. Do not give me that power. I will not win well for you. Yeah, no. I can hold myself back a lot. You will fuck yourself. Okay. Um and uh. Then you see uh, Lou kind of pop his head out of the chamber. He says, uh, all right, I think I've got, uh, I think I've got it ready. Yeah, what happens next? Uh, well, something a little bit that I understand and a little bit that I don't. Uh, why don't you join me in the chamber? Okay. Oh, but it better be chill. I don't know if we're ready to run into right the next adventure. It better be chill. It's been um, a big day. Well, it's not really chill. Well, at least I don't think it's chill, but I'm not really sure, to be totally honest. All right. Now. Okay. Now. All right. I'm a little bit anxious because uh, I think, I mean, the next step is to get the next planar key, to be honest. Um... That's a task I've never given anyone. It'll be the first group I've ever given to get the second planar key. Now, here's the trick, though. I think we need to go for the green one. Oh. Didn't, you, didn't we say that there wasn't one? Yeah, see, that's what we need to really kind of drill down on, because let me put it this way. If there's no green planar key... We, uh, we can't do a, a planar rebinding. Like, with the whole quest, there's no... There's, we might as well just give up. That makes sense. I, uh, uh, so we need you to go to the green plane. And we need you to find out what the hell's going on. We need you to find out where the hell the green planar key's gone. What's, what's happening? And if it's not there, you need to find that out. Because I'll need to do something... Oh god, I don't really know what's going to happen if uh, if there's no green planar essence because I've kind of built a literally everything that we've got on the assumption that it existed and something was hiding it. And you need to find it. You need to do something to find where this bloody green planar essence is. You guys are in the chamber. We need chamber music. Uh... So I think that's the next step is you got to go to the green plane and find what happened to the green plane or essence, who's hiding it, where it is, or if it doesn't exist. And if it doesn't exist, I need to know because we need to reevaluate what's going on at that point. Okay. Um, okay. Investigation. Where, how should we start? Yeah, well, I'm going to open a portal to the green plane or essence. To the green plane or to the green plane sorry to the i'm gonna open a portal to the green plane for you yep. okay I, yeah you got it are you, are you all right i'm He's okay right. listen He's having a hard time today. one of them's a planar key one of them's a planar essence one of them's a plane one of them's a plane or something and it's a lot, it's a lot it's, there's too many planes um oh. i'm a wigwam i'm a tp i'm a wigwam i'm a tp relax man you're too tense Oh, all right. That's bad. No, that's terrible. That's terrible. None of that. Idiot. You idiot. Um, and uh, and Lou too kind of turns, and he pulls out a coin. He's like, "Unfortunately, we're using too many of these coins. We don't have an infinite number of them, and every time we use one, we draw a lot of attention here. Now, unfortunately, Mister Locke had to use some." to get rid of Olos, and I have to use one to open the but, portal. 
Well, whoa, whoa, whoa. I mean, how will we connect with you? How will we get back? Well, I'm kind of hoping when you get to the green planer key that you have them open a portal. Oh, yeah. So far, the planer keys seem totally, like, reasonable and talkable and cooperatable. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's busy. I mean, I know it sounds... There's no other way. I mean, there's... Uh, you have to go there to find what what's going on. And, uh... I can't make a portal to bring you back. I can... Well, okay, I can... I can check in from time to time, but I won't have any way to... Know when you've done it. Like, I... What if, what if I wait a month to check in? And, you know, you, you, you've been done for a long time and something goes wrong. Right, you're right. So I can check in. I'll check in every now and then when I can, when I can but we're going to need to do a lot of work to hide the bar and the chamber because with the amount of prime ink that we've just used, there's something out there that's uh, looking our way. So we're going to need to take a little bit of time to kind of sort things out on our end. Uh, so I'm going to open up a portal to the green plane and you're going to need to go there and find out what's what's happening with the green plane or key. Please, please let it be, let it not be destroyed or something. Uh, yeah? No, no, nothing. Never mind. All right. Now, is there anything you can tell us about the green plane? Not really too much other than uh, magic really exists there. There's a lot of people that know how to use magic. It's like weavers are kind of like a kind of like a they're kind of like what do you call them a delicacy here or whatever the rare thing is. Um, they're kind of not really common here on the white plain. On the green plain, there's a lot of people that know how to use magic. They don't call it ink. They don't call it weaving. They just call it magic there. Uh, and there's a lot of them. Wizards, all that kind of stuff. Kind of the stuff in fantasy books. It's kind of like that. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, Lou's Sounds thinking like about, <laughs> Lou's thinking about how, um, Gold Buddy wasn't accessible and thing, things. Will we still be ourselves? Will we carry our own selves and abilities yeah, that's, there? That's kind of what I wanted to talk about next. Um. Slump doesn't like this already. Slump better have his fucking monocle. Uh, <laughs> alright, well, those, those items, anything that came out of the box, that's kind of transplaner. Those, the kind of, uh, wills of fate that give you those items, prevent them from being destroyed when you travel through these portals. Don't worry about those ones. Those ones you got for sure. But, okay. there's a lot of unpredictability about traveling through a portal, and there's some certainties. So... Planar keys seem to be able to walk through the portals just fine. They can travel to and from the planes if they know how to. Seems like not many really know how to. Uh, I don't think Kerr ever really figured out how to do that. Uh, but as you've seen, Volos can just walk between the planes as he wills. Now, from the limited testing I've seen, looks like the kind of lesser beings like you guys and even myself... You lose everything when you go through that. What, do you, what does that mean? Oh. You'll lose all the power that you've gained from your adventures. That disappears. Most of the items you've got, uh, save for the ones you've got from the box, they don't survive the travel either. I immediately get a, uh, drop a tear for uh for slumps two extra arms <laughs> oh yeah oh and just because no. they're technically i mean now. yeah well anyways um <laughs> <laughs> uh a lot of the things that are tied to the white ink won't make the trip and i don't know that you'll really make the trip as yourself really either i can't tell you that the Jake right here, right now, is going to be the Jake over there in the green plane. I don't know. Yeah, why do I feel like this is all setting us up to fucking roll 5e? 
I don't know what that's that's some words that I don't really understand. Sure okay, seems possible right. though. I wasn't using my in character voice. Whatever. I want to run out of the room immediately. We're in the bar, right? You're in the chamber. I run out of the chamber and I go back to the bar and I want to run over to lock real quick. Yep. Ha, ha, ha. Hey, listen. Ugh. Uh, I'm going to need you to take care of this. And I want to pull up Ick out of my pocket immediately and I want to put him oh on the bar. God. Oh, hello. I'm, do I live in the bar now? You live in the bar here kind of forever because where I'm going, you will die. Oh, I don't like that. I don't want to die. But yeah, I don't really like the bar either. He's a cute little mushroom. Who's this, this is man? Ick. This is this is Locke. And my you're name is Dr. Ick. For, you're I'm a doctor. For, I'm a Frankenstein. I do, I do science all the time. You're gonna, you're gonna I have lots of things to talk very... about. Well, I was uh... sitting next to a bag of candies and I ate a bunch of them. Don't I got really them. smart and said I got really dumb. I want to like ever so slightly like 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 I'm booping a cat with the top of the mushroom. Stop. <laughs> Ow. Uh, he's, Ow. He talks a lot, but he's he's smart and he'll keep you company and don't hurt him. I'll uh I'll make sure he gets plenty of of light or. or no, not, don't or give me light of a mushroom. My <laughs> does the light will kill me. You want something moist and damp? I like the moist and the damp and the dark. I'm gonna have to make a room for him, aren't I? No, just make something that you can cover him with and make sure it's soundproof. I want a room to myself. I want an ick room. I think Mr. Locke just wings at him, just like, mm-hmm. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're yeah, you're you'll do you do good. Uh fuck. Okay, and I like start thinking of what else I have in my fucking secret pocket. <laughs> uh okay, no way this'll work over there. And I wanna get a loose tiny spaceship. Yep. Okay, no way that'll fucking you're gonna, I'm gonna need you to hold on to this. This not an RC car. Actual spaceship. Huh. It's an X spaceship. I flew it. Huh? I've just, I have it shrunk. It's shrunken down. Magic. Don't ask. It's oh. an actual spaceship. Don't. That actually makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Here, you're going to need that. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I want to get out the actual. Uh, oh, wait, no. We, we actually already used our, our real spaceship. That's still floating in space, I assume. Yep. Yep. Still docked okay. with the Dauntless. Uh, I kind of want to. Slop. Yeah. You, you might want to leave Kevin here. Why? Because he might not survive the trip. What? What if he gets lonely? I, I'm. Uh, he'll be with Ek, and he'll be with Locke, and with Lou too. What if they pick on him? We'll kill them. Oh. What if they? What if he gets scared and doesn't know where Slump went? He won't. He's gonna get. A, he's gonna get. Uh, I look at Locke, like trying to comfort him. I say, "We're gonna. He, he's gonna get his own farm." Mm hmm. Will they give? Will they give? Will they make sure that he gets his favorite treats? All the time. Is he really a little cheap, cheap? Every day. You promise? <sighs> <Okay>. <laughs> And he's like just he's like trying to he knows that like obviously that what they're doing right now is pretty important so he's he's moving with a sense of purpose he's not like dragging his feet but he's just like inconsolably blubbering just like cannot even attempt to, to stifle the tears just hysterically crying as he gives like carefully gives uh, the bartender his uh, egg I know, I know he's crying his eyes out, but I really genuinely cannot wait for the reunion right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think Locke yells back into the chamber and goes, Lou, we have a farm now. Oh, come on now. We've already got, all right. No, I've already promised it's happening. All right, all right. We'll get started right as soon as we're done. All right, I guess we have a farm now. Uh, I know I put a lot more in my fucking pocket than this. What the fuck? Yeah, what hey, fuck? Uh, Mr. Locke, you got like a big old safe or like There's a shelf? Yeah. Some, I had something sizable. I'm gonna like spin my backpack around to my chest and unzip it and then just look him like dead in the face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then I guess he snaps his fingers and like produces like a large like kind of container. Anything you want saved, just put in here and I'll make sure it gets locked away safe. 
All right, that's cool. not living. Well, oh. <laughs> <laughs> there's no air holes in it. So just just to clarify, like anything that we have, period, that we did not get out of the the box here, is going to be like transformed or gone. Uh, you don't know. It okay, won't. Cool. It probably because there's going to be some exceptions. But basically, uh, you're not allowed to bring a gun into Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> right, fair. Yeah, that, that is actually not true. That's that not is fair. true. We do not have the uh, Matt Mercer's Percy class. I mean, you could do like and Arquivis and all. Right. Percy doesn't exist in my canon. Is, it, was I right? Are you rolling this 5e? I will neither confirm or deny. <laughs> well, you just said you can't bring it into Dungeons and Dragons, you jackass. Yeah, well, uh, I will neither confirm nor deny any further than that. Goldrick the Paladin, here we go. Oh, oh you, yo, you know it. Oh, you fucking uh, know it. Boy, if you saw the description I had. <laughs> so I pull out like a weird bag with like a shriveled up like monkey hand attached to it. And you go, oh, juju bag and just throw it in the box. Uh, some kind of weird knife. Do you know about this? Goldrick is a blessed knife. I don't know why I have it. I just sort of hold What the fuck? <laughs> I don't know. You want it? Knife. Oh, here you go. Where did you get this? Uh, found it. This is old. Oh, my All right. God. How is this still? And I kind of want to, like, bang it on the counter, and I want it to break. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, cool. Thanks. No, that's fine. Just throw both pieces in there. I'll fix it. It's fine. It'll it'll it melds back together. It's fine. And I want to I have it. a flamethrower with no ammunition. Just throw it in the box. I'm yep. gonna get a bigger box. One moment. Oh yeah. <laughs> there we go. I have six <clears throat> Nokia phones. I'll keep one on me. Just in case. It's gonna turn into a pigeon. Crossbow. Couple different clears. I got some fiberglass bolts. I got some steel bolts, iron bolts, silver bolts. I kind um, of wonder to myself. I'm like, will you think you'd be able to take your Tupperware? Oh fuck! I mean, it came out the magic thing, right? I mean, well, no, it came out of God Day. So like, I don't know. I'm gonna roll the bones on that one. I don't think I can part with it. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, all right. Can I put some of my my weaponry in here too? I yeah. throw it at man. There's okay. a microwave right. cannon. I got some holy water, a couple lemons, garlic, salt. I wanna I wanna take like my, my holy divine weapon, uh, my my trident, and I wanna put it inside, and then I wanna like manifest it back in my hand and then I wanna put it inside again. And I just wanna make it look like I'm just putting forty two thousand it's actually just the same one. Where do you keep all those? This is crazy. Don't ask, don't ask, don't ask, don't ask. Yeah. Five pounds of space C4, a couple no ceiling no nails that were for people that don't exist anymore. <laughs> I'm gonna, okay, I'm genuinely going to pull out my pistol and I'm going to get a little sad. I'm going to be like, this can't go either, can it? Um, When you do that, Lou too uh, kind of holds up a finger. He's like, wait, hold on just one moment. And he switches his lens from white to green. And he's like, uh, and then he switches it from green to gold. And then he switches it from gold to blue. He's like, aha. Goldrick. That's not a white ink weapon. Yeah, I, I... that's a blue ink weapon. What? Then how's it here? Uh, that's, I'm not really sure, actually. The... I know how. But I, I'm pretty sure it can cross the barrier. If if that's from the blue ink and it's in here, I'm pretty sure it can make its way over to the green ink pretty easily. I grin. My baby. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. Okay, fuck it. I'm just going to let it go. I'm going to, obviously, I'm going to retract my divine weapon because I think that's part of my being yes yeah yeah weapon. absolutely <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i i once i put another one in and i just put it back in my pocket yeah and uh i'll just like okay oh i was fuck i was getting ready to part with that put it back in its holster and i'm like okay let's i think that's everything at least everything that's living uh, 
I throw ten unregistered license plates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lou will empty, empty her pockets. She's going to keep the um, recent magic things that weren't in from uh, the box because she suspects maybe something will happen with them, like the hearty heart and stuff. So she's going to keep them. Yep, yep, that makes sense. Okay, are you guys all done parting with your stuff? I'm keep. Do you like want to know the stuff that I keep, or as long as it's on my sheet, are you good? Um, basically, uh, we're gonna we're gonna hash it out. I'll tell you what happens, and you can retcon anything that gets like bad, batted. If you're like, okay. I oh, I keep my C4 because that sounds like it it works, right? And then we go in there, and it's like, oh, your C4 is now mud. You're like, okay, well, I would have put that away. Got it. So we, oh, we that's can, nice. Yeah, Thank you. because you guys have no idea what's going to happen, so I'm not going to punish you for, for whatever kind of thing. We can, we can. All, uh, things are going to happen, and if you, if you're okay with what happens, then it happens. And if you're not okay with it, we can retcon it having been put away. I'm going to definitely bring the plague vial and antidote. I was going. I'm trying to think of any other things. Like I guess, uh, slump had his door bangers and Kevin and his fu- his fungus arms, but I don't know that he had much else. Not really. Slump's pretty yeah. light on the items. Yeah, pretty hard. Yeah. Pretty heavy so on the punching. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Backpack. <laughs> so yeah, we can we can sort that out later. We don't need to worry and sit here and go through all the items. Don't <laughs> okay. don't worry about that. That's not fun. We can do that like oh, later or or just figure it out as we go. Where'd I get a deck of titty playing cards? <laughs> oh my god! Who knows? <laughs> you guys ready? Do it. Ready. Okay, it's 10 o'clock, but this is the note that we're going to end off on. Lou pulls out a coin and he pushes it down through the air and you hear that kind of tearing sound of Velcro as it creates this kind of pearlescent shimmering streak of prime ink as he pushes the coin down through the air. And when he pulls it to the side, you see green mossy ground and tall trees it's like all right it's not going to stay open for long and you guys go and i think you guys just go through and when you guys go through you find yourselves in the middle of a forest And some of you guys have seen forests, and some of you haven't, but none of you have seen a forest like this. The trees are huge. They're reaching dozens of meters into the sky. The ground is soft with moss. And it's so quiet around you. You hear a bird or two way off in the distance, and the chittering of small animals. But other than that, it's absolutely quiet. And you hear the wind rustling through the trees. And in the distance, you hear something strange. It's almost like thunder. But no, it's like a roar of something. and Something huge and a shadow covers over top of you as a massive flying scaly beast soars high in the sky it's a dragon a huge green dragon soars overhead roaring as it goes and you hear more thunder these are hoofbeats you've heard hoofbeats before with a little bit with cattle but this is a lot this is like hundreds and hundreds of soldiers No shouting or nothing, but a hundred or two hundred soldiers come charging past you, tearing up the ground as they go in hot pursuit of the dragon. They weave around you. They're wielding swords and axes and pikes. Some are carrying banners. They're beaten. Their tabards are shredded. They've been in heavy battle, but they are chasing the dragon. And as they pass, the silence returns. The ground is chewed up from the horses. And you stand there, breathing in fresh, clean air. 
and you are in the green ink. And that is where we'll stop. Holy shit. Holy I'm shit. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> you went from one of my least favorite genres to yeah. one of my favorite in one moment. And yeah. I am full on erection. <laughs> <laughs> Am I a real wizard now? Guys, <laughs> I am going to be sending you some information over the coming oh days. Oh my god. Because shit has changed in a huge way. Welcome to the second arc of Monsters Ain't Real. Holy shit. <sighs> fucking congratulations, that a, guys. That was a fucking pog ass episode. That was a fucking <laughs> pog in the P episode right there, man. Yeah. God. <laughs> thank you guys so much holy shit that was so fucking cool everything about that, that was, was so amazing fantastic first hey, arc you, officially complete fuck yes <sighs> wow I, and i gotta admit i the the combat with the last boss of that whole thing was was short but so fascinating in how it was done. Like yeah. how yeah. combat first it was. That was crazy, man. I was not expecting the Volos play so early. I didn't think you guys were gonna give him the opportunity to uh to like come in and do his shit with weakened Kerr. Oh man. The oh, I man. was so fucking worried about that stupid liar's tongue, and sure enough. <laughs> Sure enough, I, I should have been worried. Everything. Yeah, it ruined literally everything. <laughs> you are welcome. Let me tell you though, like that was probably the single greatest use of it because yeah. there were a couple versions of all the characters. Um, There was tethered and untethered for Kerr and for Volos. There was also, so that was tethered Kerr versus untethered Volos. That's why Volos was doing a hundred harm per turn. Um, and uh, because he, yeah, he wasn't tethered. And then there was, there was a dual essence version of Volos. Oh God. That's not yeah. good. I don't want to know what those abilities yeah. are called. Yeah. And you guys were so close <laughs> to seeing dual essence Volos. I kind of want to know what would have happened. Yeah, let's hear it. What, what, what if some of his abilities would have been? I'm not, I don't want to, because I don't oh, want to say it's so much. There's a lot of campaign yeah. left. All right. Yeah, let me tell you. Well. No, there's I'm no the way. Plan. There was so much smoke. There's no way he's still alive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. There's so many cool things. Oh, man. The fight with Kerr, the, the, oh, the shit in the bar. With the fucking uh, lock in his fucking weapon. Holy shit. I got genuinely real world very upset that we might lose lock. I was very concerned. <laughs> that lock was gonna die. Oh man, and we got to the green ink. Holy fucking shit, guys. Congratulations. Fuck yes, that we was have fucking, some fucking fun. Yeah, so yeah, we got, to, I'll, I'll give you guys a whole bunch of information. We got some shit to suss out. Uh, I want to make sure everyone's on the same page before we get started. But next week on Friday, we are going to be here again, starting arc two of Monsters Ain't Real. What's up? Awesome. Thank Fuck you guys. Yes. Thank you guys so much. I will see you guys next week. See you guys next fucking week. Have a night. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.